Alongside my partner, Jerry Stanger, I am Rob Moorhead, joining you live from Lucas Oil Stadium as we await the Trojans to run out of the tunnel on the far end of the field as we look out across this beautiful stadium. The Trojans just about ready to take the field. Jerry, you are smiling today, my friend, because the Trojans are wearing their all-black unis. I'm just going to say the Trojans are the home team today, and they are black on black, and that is what everybody wants to see. They love the black uniforms. Love them. As we speak right now, Trojan football players are on the big screen with their pre-recorded interviews as they get ready to take the field. Jer? Real quickly, Rob, I want to uh, remind folks, and I, not that everybody needs reminding, don't forget the Larchburg Tigers are up here tomorrow, same time kickoff up here at Lucas Oil Stadium uh, to try to bring home a, a, a 3A state championship to Dearborn County. And uh, I understand that a lot of the Tigers coaches and players are here today to support the Trojans and also congratulations to the North Decatur Chargers on an incredibly fine season as well. And And here here come come the the Trojans. Trojans. (laughs) They are coming out of the tunnel. You hear the fans right below us, way down below us, as they are cheering. Eli Aston leads the Trojans out of the tunnel as the Trojans take the field. And Jerry, we spoke a lot about the offenses earlier on. Both these teams are solid defensively as well. Of course, East Central gives up only 10.6 points a game. That's number two in Class 4A. But you know what, Jerry? New Prairie ties them at 10.6 points a game as well. And when you look at this defense for the Trojans, they are led by a linebacking core of Braden Rouse, Dylan Maxwell, Rhett Smith, and Louie Gray. Those four gentlemen lead them in tackles. And Carson Kelly leads the team from this defensive back position with three interceptions. Over on the Cougars side for New Prairie, we mentioned Tavian Ortman, a senior linebacker, 130 tackles. Hayden Scott, a sophomore linebacker, has 94 tackles and four interceptions. Dallas Ryans also has four interceptions along with Brock Sinka. And Dylan Wilson, a junior linebacker, leads them with six sacks. The teams are taking midfield, the captains, I should say. And, Jerry, you can talk about the captains as they approach, and uh, the coin toss, I think, has already been held. Yeah, I think it has, too. And as we look out there, East Central will be going left to right as we look out of this expansive press box here at Lucas Oil Stadium. The official in the white hat is about to tell us who won the toss and who's going to get the football. Looked like Josh Ringer going out as one of the captains, among others, Jerry. Cole, Cole Burton, Jeremy Proctor, and Rhett Smith, the other ones. And how about an entrance that Josh Ringer made? He got about 10 yards from the Trojan sideline, did a backflip right in the middle of the field. And he is going to get to see the football first as New Prairie won the toss and they deferred choice to the second half. So the Trojans will have their offense on the field first today, Jer. And we're just about ready to kick this ball game off here at Lucas Oil Stadium. What a fantastic atmosphere we've got here and uh, really grateful to have a chance to bring it to you. We want to thank Brent Lee and everyone connected with WRBI as well as our fine sponsors for bringing us this opportunity here today. We are just about set to go. Ringer, Eli Aston, Ryan Brotherton. Aston will be the man in the middle as the Trojans take the field. And kicking. Tremendous crowds on both sides for this 4A game. My apologies, Jerry. Yeah. Doing the kickoff duties will be number 59, I believe it is, Owen Chalik, if we'll see when he makes his way out onto the field. And uh, Owen Chalik is a 5'9 junior who will kick this football off. The Trojans. <laughs> Looking good as you look out onto this field, and the crowd is on their feet on both sides. A great picture of Eli Aston up on the big screen right now. My wife says we sound great. She's listening to us on the live stream down below. Well, you know what? Speaking of that, I need to give a shout-out to my wife, who is right here behind us in the press box. Appreciate Lisa coming up and joining us today. And she is taking care of finding the stats, the live stats online that we'll be able to bring you up to speed with as the game goes along. It is indeed number 59, Owen Chalik, set to kick off. The ball is spotted at the 40-yard line. And my daughter's about to lose her mind. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. 
Chalik, the right-footed kicker, raises the right arm, approaches the football, swings the right leg. It's a pooch kick, and this game is underway. It'll be fielded at the 25-yard line on the far side, run out to the 28-yard line, and that's where East Central will start this first offensive possession. It looks like Ryan Brotherton yep. fielded that kick, Jerry. Well, right away, you can see they do not want to kick it to Eli Aston. That was a design kick to the sideline. Uh Brotherton lets it go. It goes out of bounds more than likely, but Ryan elected to field it. Get, touch that ball the first time. Take that first hit. Get the butterflies out of your belly. Trojans got it first and 10 at their own 29. Cole Burton brings this offense onto the field. 93 for 149 through the air, 1,744 yards. But as we expected, Cole Burton goes under center with the two running backs in behind him, and it's a handoff to Josh Ringer running to his right toward us. He crosses the 30-yard line, gets out to the 32, where he'll be tackled after a gain of three, second down and seven. You know, there, there could be a lot of this distraction. You're playing up here, everything going on. I think once you get each team gets a play or two under their belly, I think everything resorts back to football and your instincts and just let your abilities take over. See, you get the center position. Anderson Schneider on the left. Schneider and Bates on the right of this offensive line. Ringer goes in motion. It's a pitch out to Ringer. Brotherton was in motion. A pitch out to Ringer. Ringer dives out of bounds across the 35 out to the 37-yard line. Going to bring up third down and two. Good pursuit by New Prairie. That looked like initially it might be a big gainer for Josh. They brought Brotherton in motion over to the far side. He followed. Ringer did follow Brotherton, but a good job by New Prairie. It's going to be third and two. Josh runs off the field. I think his helmet came off, an equipment issue, so he steps out on this third and two, and that'll bring the other running back in this uh, football team, Trey Omer, onto the field. He's on the left. Now handed to Brotherton going straight up the middle. Brotherton initial Great contact. second ever. Continued to drive his legs, ran out across the 40 to the 41-yard line, and that power running will move the chains for East Central. Got hit short initially, but powered through. As you, we, for, I keep forgetting, I'm used to looking on the field all the time. We have the monitor uh, about an arm's length away from us to watch the replays. That'll be a big help as we go out through the day here. One receiver to the top of the formation, one to the bottom. Burton still under center. It's a pitch to Aston this time on the jet sweep, running to his right. He's got Eli Aston across the fifth. Go, baby! The 30. The 30. Go, baby! The 25. Go, Eli! The Woo! Five. Yes! Down. A touchdown for Eli Aston. He goes in from 59 yards out on the jet sweep. And the Trojans score first here in the Class 4A state championship. What a game. way to get on the scoreboard first for the Trojans. Got some great blocking at the 50-yard line. Made a guy miss at the 20. Cuts it back into the end zone. Eli gives the thumbs up as he goes across the goal line. What a start for the Trojans. Nathan McPhee comes on to kick the extra point. It'll be out of the hold of Cole Wheat. Nathan McPhee, the sophomore, coming in on extra points this year. Nathan, 57 out of 65. There's the snap, the hold, and the kick. And it is good, and the Trojans go on top, 7 to nothing, and we have 11.07 left to play in this first quarter. So less than a minute off the clock, Eli Aston strikes with a big 59-yard run. Beautiful blocking, beautiful play call, and what a great start. Four plays into the game of the state championship, and you're up 7 to nothing. Goodbye, butterflies or nerves or whatever else you got going on. What a job by the offensive line and the guys up front. I don't know that Eli Aston was even touched, to be honest with you. No, and he made a great cut back there around the 20-yard line, Jerry, as you mentioned. And uh, there's a good look at Coach Jake Miners on the video board as the Trojans go on top 7 and nothing. Again, this is a New Prairie team that only gives up 10.6 points a game, and uh, the Trojans strike early and get on top 7 and nothing. Randy Maxwell's loving it right now. (laughs) They're down below us and to the left. Five years ago, they were in the booth right next to us, so... uh, Just a great job. Our breaks uh, will be a little longer than usual here uh, for this game here today for obvious reasons. A nice crowd on hand. Boy, what what a way to get your team and your crowd into the game. Four plays into the game, you lead seven to nothing. Great job. Hopefully we'll see how juice Nathan's leg is here today. Back deep will be Noah Munguia and Dallas Ryans. Waiting on this kick. Munguia wears number two. Ryans wears number 25. 
Munguia has 10 returns, a 28-yard average. Ryan has 9 returns, a 17-yard average for New Prairie. They stand back at around the 9-yard line, one at the 9, one at the 6. Here comes Nathan McPhee with the left foot, swings through the ball. It's a nice kick, and it'll be a touchback. Yeah. Nathan McPhee on the fly gets it into the end zone, and that means New Prairie will start their first possession at the 20-yard line. And that right there is so huge, whether Nathan kicks off once today or 10 times, when you have to make the other team go 80 yards to score, that is a huge weapon to have. And he pounded that one probably about three or four yards deep in the end zone, as Rob said, on the fly. So we'll see what the Trojan D can do here. It's been solid all year. Rob said these teams give up almost identical points per game. Marshall Kamichik in the shotgun with Noah McGee off his right shoulder. This is a read option, and Marshall Kamichik is going to keep the football, and he's got room out across the 25, drug down to the 29-yard line. A nine-yard gain will bring up second down and one. Nice, nice job by his guys up front, giving him blocking and then creating a hole right on the edge of, off where the tackle and tight end were. So they can do about anything they want to here, second and very short. They break the huddle quickly. The ball is on the far hash mark. Again, New Prairie going from our right to our left. Shotgun formation again for Kamichik. Mungi off his left shoulder. They give it to Mungi this time. He's running backwards now looking for a cut. Gets across the 30. Out to the 33-yard line. That's enough to move the chains. It's a first down for New Prairie. Good job by New Prairie. Got themselves a first down. Got a bounce back from that initial score by East Central. They run two plays, pick up 13 yards, and a first down. This is a football team offensively. Scores 35.2 points a game. They have 352 yards a game. 267 of those are on the ground, Jerry. Definitely a rush-first football yeah, team. This, this could be the quickest game of six this weekend. Both these teams like to run the ball. One receiver, top of the formation, Mangia switches spots over to the left side of his quarterback, Kamichik, who's in the shotgun. Kamichik is back to pass this time, looking up to the right, has a man out there at the 40. It's, co- it's caught and completed at the 40-yard line. Looks like on that reception was number 25, Dallas Ryans. That's good for a gain of seven, going to bring up second down and three. Dallas Ryans, 20 receptions for 436 yards on the season. Pretty good coverage right there by... Number 14 of the Trojans, Carson Kelling. He couldn't play it much better, but just a fantastic catch by the receiver. Carson hit him right when the ball hit him, and he held on. Ryans goes deep to the bottom of the formation this time. It's a handoff to Munguia. Munguia, not much room. Now he makes a beautiful cut and a shoestring tackle as he got across the 40 out to the 42, just shy of the line to gain. Going to bring up third down and one. But, Jerry, I don't know who got him by the shoestring. Yeah. Maybe we'll see it on the replay. But Munguia looked like he was off to the races. Yeah. And there's the tackle down Rick low. Smith. It was, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, because it looked like, I, I'm like you, when he cut it back, it opened up, and Red Smith was able to bring him down. Third down and one. There's the handoff in the backfield. Across the 45, good enough for the first down. Goes the running back for New Prairie, number 57 on the carry that time, was Jacob Mrazinski. And that'll move the chains and send them up first and 10, the ball to the 46-yard line. Well, right now, anyhow, early, they're finding some success running against this East Central defense, which very few teams have done all year long. Just a power run yeah. right there on third and one to move the chains for the Cougars. Shotgun formation, this time two running backs in the backfield. Mungia gets the handoff, running around to his right, gets a block and taken down at midfield. A gain of four on the play will bring up second down and six. You can tell here after his first two or three carries, we uh, obviously me and Rob have not seen him play all year. The coaches, I'm sure, I think they've seen every film of, of New Prairie but one, but he is a cutback type runner, very shifty, very solidly built, low to the ground, about 5'8", 185, 190. Dustin Bartashevitz is the center. He's a big young man out there helping to clear some room, and Gia gets a handoff again running to the left this time. Got out of one tackle in the backfield, dove forward into East Central territory. He's taken down at the 48-yard line. Now, Jerry, we're looking at about a third yeah. and five. A big play here for this East Central yeah, defense. The first uh, time here early, they've had a third and one two times in a row. Kingston Cook on the tackle. And a nice tackle. He came across the field there, Jerry, and dove 
uh, to bring down Mungi. A third and five. The Trojan fans are on their feet trying to encourage this defense to get a big third down stop here. It's a fake to Munguia. Quarterback Nothing. keeps it, and he loses big, yardage big time. Louis Gray is in there along with Carson Pizanka, and they drop him for, they drop Marshall Kaczynski for about a five yard loss. Kamichik, I should say. Yep. For about a, well, they're going to mark him, they'll give him forward progress, yep. Jerry, back to the 48, but still brings up fourth down and eight. Yeah. And that's going to bring the punt team onto the field. Eli Aston and Brotherton will drop back. They'll get this punt away from about his own 40. So the defense comes through after a couple of first downs. Get that new Prairie offense off the field. Marshall Kamichik is the punter. The quarterback does the punting. The ball bounces and fielded at the 20-yard line by Aston. Aston looking for a block. Gets out to the 25. Now spins. Still on his feet. Finally taken down at the 28-yard line. Nice job by Eli. That was a tricky bounce that he played there. Uh, but fielded it nicely. We have an injured New Prairie Cougar down, Rob. Okay. And there's going to be a timeout here. So why don't we break here and take a quick timeout. We'll go send it back to the station to Brent Lee. We'll come back with more first quarter action right after this. Trojans are on top 7 to nothing here from Lucas Oil Stadium on Country 103.9 WRBI. Attention all motorists. The white-tailed deer are on the move and crossing the roads. Joe Fetty and his staff at Fetty's Auto Body remind you to be careful when driving your vehicle. And if you meet up with a white-tailed deer, have no fear. Call Fetty's Auto Body to get your car back in gear. If your vehicle has small dings or dents, let Fetty's Auto Body use veinless dent repair. Or if it's a major collision repair, Fetty's will work with all insurance companies. And all work is warranted. Fetty's Auto Body on North Dearborn Road in Sunman. Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep is a proud sponsor of local athletics. I'm Michelle Galk, and at Batesville Chrysler, we value this community and the relationships we've built with our customers. As your hometown car dealer, we understand the importance of staying connected to the community. We commend all our student-athletes and their hard work and dedication. That's why we're proud to sponsor local sports coverage so that fans can stay connected no matter where we are. Remember, you can buy a car anywhere, but when you buy a Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep, we can all work together to support the future of this great community. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. This afternoon's Class 4A State Championship game being brought brought to you by Cornerstone Realty and Lutz Auction Service, Whitewater Motors, Uber Trucking, Bruns Gutswiller, and Hoosier Power Sports, among others. Rob Moorhead, Jerry Stanger with you. We have six minutes and 36 seconds left to play in quarter number one. East Central Trojans are on top in this ball game by a score of seven to nothing. And on the big screen, they're giving you a replay of Eli Aston's huge blocked kick in the final uh, seconds of the Ron Colley East Central regulation last week. Much to the delight of the Trojan fans who are looking on. Speaking of Eli Aston, pretty good start for that young man, Jerry, as he scampers 59 yards on a jet sweep all the way to the house for a touchdown to give the Trojans the early lead in this contest. Fans are cheering down below, and uh, I, we really got it. When you look outside here, you wish we were playing outside. It is really nice here in downtown Indianapolis this afternoon, and uh, some rain in the area this morning, but it's all moved out, and we're just about ready for football here. Indeed, the Trojan offense comes back onto the field. Ringer and Brotherton back in the backfield once again. Under center will go Cole Burton. Two receivers split out wide to the bottom of the formation on first and ten. It's a handoff to Josh Ringer. Ringer looking for a block, has one, gets out across the 35-yard line. Dives down to the 37, make it the 38-yard line. A nine-yard gain on the play. Bring up second down and one. Just a great run on first down. You score. You give up a couple first downs. You get a stop. You get an eight-yard run, and you start your next drive. Three down linemen on the defense for this new Prairie Cougar defense. They hand this one to Ryan Brotherton. Brotherton gets across the 40 to the 41. Gang tackled there and drugged down, but that's the yardage he needed for the first down. Move the chains for the Trojans. Little inside handoff. Not much there, but not all plays are designed to go to the end zone. That was a design play to get Brotherton up in the middle of the line, let him work and get a first down, move the chains, keep the clock running. 
The two receivers, Wheat and Aston, go to the top of the formation this time, to the wide side of the field. Ball on the near hash, first and ten. Brotherton running to his left. Gets to the outside, makes a man miss. Now he's across midfield, down the sideline at the 40, the 30, where he's taken down at the 32-yard line. A big gainer for Ryan Brotherton. Great blocking on the edge as he goes to the far side of the field and uses his speed and, again, tripped up at the last minute. But a great run by Ryan Brotherton. You mentioned it, Jerry. Excellent blocking out there on the far side to give Ryan Brotherton the opportunity to turn the corner. Ryan sets him up first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Under center is Burton. They send Aston in motion. They pitch it to him. Now it's an inside handoff to Ringer. Ringer across the 25, getting to the corner, 20, 15. Touchdown! Touchdown! Josh Ringer goes in from 32 yards out on the inside handoff from Eli Aston, and the Trojans have a two-score lead. What a start for the offense. Eight plays, two touchdowns. We're just over halfway through the first quarter. With Cole Burton out there leading the way, Brotherton and Wheat with the touchdown signal. The Trojans are fired up. 32 yards to the end zone for the touchdown for Josh Ringer. A beautiful design play that time. As it looked like they were going to give it to Aston on the sweep running to his left. He hands it inside to Josh Ringer. Ringer does the rest. The kick extra point by McPhee is good. And the East Central Trojans lead New Prairie 14 to nothing with 519 left to play here in the first quarter, Jerry. Great start for the Trojans. Somebody told me before the game, and I actually honestly don't remember who, but today could be a uh, breakout game for Josh Ringer. He is uh, just a fabulous young man. Older brother Sam graduated this past year. Uh, I'm sure he's here somewhere in the crowd. And, uh, you know, Josh, uh, where did I write it down at anyhow? Maybe I'll probably never find it. Josh coming into the year um, or into this game, fifth in the state in rushing, third in scoring, and tied for second in touchdowns in the state. And with any kind of a game here at all today, he, he will definitely be lead, leading the state in touchdowns and uh, could move up the rushing chart as well. But he's had a phenomenal year. And, you know, you talk about the kid like him. Yeah, Ron Colley, not that East Central doesn't play a cupcake schedule, but the Royals play a little bit tougher schedule. Uh, Luke Hansen had somewhere around more than 150 carries this year than Josh Ringer, mainly because they probably had a couple of closer games and because Josh rarely seen a second half. And a lot of the Trojans' games were running clock in the second half. Uh, all three in the sectional were. So, uh, you know, hard telling where Josh Ringer's stats would be if he uh, was playing four quarters like uh, Luke Hansen did. Not to take anything away from Hansen, uh, as we and, me and Rob seen firsthand this year on two different occasions, that young man is a real deal with that offensive line. behind him, but uh, I, I think he's the odds-on favorite, like I said, to win Mr. Football, and I think uh, young Mr. Ringer here in the red, white, and black has a really, really good shot at it next year. 36th rushing touchdown of the year for Josh Ringer to go with three through the air. For Eli Aston earlier in the game, his second rushing touchdown of the year to go with seven he's had through the air. Jerry, you mentioned the first drive was four plays, 71 yards. The second drive was four plays, 72 yards. Jerry, what do all those eight plays have in common? They're all runs. They're all running plays. So Cole, There's a few coaches that are loving it. <laughs> Cole Burton has not dropped back for a pass just yet. And uh, if you watch East Central football, you may see them early in the season run the spread formation and throw the ball all over the field. But nine times out of ten, when it comes time for the tournament, they go back to what they do and do so well, which is a power running game. And they are doing that very well so far in this one. And anytime you have a situation like that, Jerry, you got to give a shout yes. out to the guys up front. Uh, just thinking the same that, thing. That are clearing the way uh, for those running backs to get to, to do the job. And you're looking up front with the center of RJC, left guard Noah Annis, left tackle Noah Schneider, right guard Patrick Schneider, right tackle Braden Bates. Those guys getting the job done up front. We are ready to kick this football off. The Trojans, Nathan McPhee set to kick it off deep. Had a touchback the first time. He'll squib this one. 
It'll be touched and fielded at the 20-yard line out to the 25-27 now. Goes the ball carry where he is gang tackled. They're the saying it's comes, a fumble. Yeah, it comes loose, but the officials are saying no. The ground caused the fumble. Okay. The Trojans, number 46, came out of there with the football. That's Braden Rouse. But uh, it was not fumbled until after the ball carrier was on the ground. So it'll be first and 10 for the East Central Trojans. For, Excuse New Prairie me, for the New Prairie Cougars. <laughs> I'm trying to write and talk at the same time here, brother, but thank you. And it'll be from their 27 yard line. Trojans up 14 to nothing. 5 14 left in the first quarter. Marshall Kamichik in the shotgun. Mungia off his right shoulder. The hand is to Mangia. Mangia, not much there. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jerry, maybe we'll give him a gain of two yep. out to the 29. He was able to push the pile ahead a little bit. One of his teammates there looks like 46 grabbed him and kind of slung him forward a little bit. But actually, they are going to look like Rob only give it. Well, on the field, it's a gain of, yep, a gain of one. My, my bad. 27-yard line was the start there at the 28. Second down. And nine. Two receivers, top of the formation. They run a read option back here with Kamichik and Mungia. This is going to be a drop back for Kamichik. He's under pressure, gets rid of it. Oh, almost picked off. Indeed, almost intercepted for the Trojans. It was one of the defensive backs there, Andrew Roy, who almost came up with that football, hit his hands and fell to the ground. But big-time pressure coming that time for Kamichik as well. Another great job by the defense and uh, the guys calling the defense. Just the ever-slightest delay of a delayed blitz, and that forced the quarterback to get rid of, it, rid of it about a half second sooner than he wanted. The receiver had a step, and if he completes that without the pressure, that could be six. Red Smith on the pressure that time. This is a run for Kamichik. Student body right here looking for a block, and he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Just a fantastic job getting in there was Rhett Smith. Drops him back to the original line of scrimmage. Going to bring up fourth down and another punt for New Prairie. I'm really surprised at the play call. They're already down 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Uh, that play never had a chance, to be honest with you. You're, you're not going to fool an East Central defense at this point in the season running your quarterback wide and uh, think you're going to pick up nine yards. And Jerry, give Carson Bazanka a, a credit for setting the edge that time. There's the snap under pressure, but the kick is away. Brotherton fields it at the 37. Brotherton running to his right. He runs near, into his own man. Got near midfield, but you are correct. Helping him up off the turf was <laughs> Louis Gray, who, who ought to get credit for the tackle. <laughs> he, uh, there's no question about it. <laughs> but excellent field position for the Trojans. They'll take over at the 49-yard line. One yard away from midfield. And Brian and Louis just, I don't know if they just flat out ran right smack dab into one another or Ryan had a lane uh, Jim, down here on our sideline. 3.49, let's play in the first quarter. There's a timeout on the field. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. Be back with more right after this. East Central on top of New Prairie, 14 to nothing in the Class 4A state championship game on Country 103.9 WRBI. You can depend on Straber Oil Company, a locally owned small business. Regardless of the weather or time of year, you can depend on Straber Oil Company, your marathon distributor, to deliver fuel oil, gasoline, diesel fuel, and a full line of lubricants when and where you need them. Straber Oil Company always delivers with prompt and courteous service. Call Straber Oil Company today at 812-934-2910. Congratulations to the East Central Trojans football team from the Straber Oil Company. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Rob Moorhead, Jerry Stanger back with you. Today's game brought to you in part by Lutz Beef by Dale and Randy Lutz, Olive Shell, Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep, and Hornberger and Sons. 14 to nothing. Trojans with the lead. Still 349 left in the first quarter. And yes, we were going to have a lot more and a lot longer breaks than we normally would for the allowance of the IHSA TV broadcast. Jerry, so far, the Trojans, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. 142 yards all on the ground in eight rushing attempts. That's 17 yards per carry for New Prairie. They've rushed it nine times for a total of 22 yards, only 2.4 yards per carry. Timeout is over. Trojan offense is on the field under center. Two running backs in behind him again. A handoff to Brotherton. Brotherton running to his left. 
Cuts it back, gets into New Prairie territory. Going to be stopped at the 48-yard line. Bring up second down and seven. Positive yards, second and seven. Nothing wrong with that. Trojans have shown they can run the ball, at least here early, against this tough Cougar defense. Cole Wheat way split out to the top. Eli Aston in the slot. Again, under center is Burton. Ringer to his left. Brotherton to his right. This one goes to Josh. Josh Ringer hits the line of scrimmage, and then Cole... Burton helps shove him still on his feet. The whole pile rugby scrums across the 35. Incredible. All the way down to the 38-yard line. Initial contact, Jerry, was at about the 45. Yeah. And Cole Burton, along, among others, that offensive line, here you see the replay of it. We Look see at the it replay. anyway. And the great thing about it was somehow or another, Josh Ringer was able to keep his feet. And there was about 15 guys in that pile. And what a run. That moves the chains. The ball goes down to the 38-yard line. Fantastic job by everybody, including Cole Burton. Same formation. Clock runs at 2.52. This is a handoff to Brotherton running to the left. Got a block from Ringer. He's inside the 30. Spun down and taken down to the 25-yard line. A gain of eight on the play. Second down and two. Beautiful. Eight yards. First down run. Your second and two on the Cougar 25-yard line, two and a half left, counting first quarter. East Central up 14 to nothing. Trey Omer had a nice block on that play as well. Two receivers at the bottom of the formation this time as the ball is on the far side hash. It's a keeper this time for Cole Burton. He Burton not tra- have it. Yeah, he needed to get to the 23-yard no, line, and short. I believe he might be about a yard short, Jerry. Yep. He got one on the play, and they're going to be looking at a third down and one. That may be nothing more than giving Ringer and Brotherton a rest for one play. Eli Aston checks out, which means they're going heavy formation here, what they used to call the elephant formation. This will be eight offensive linemen, a quarterback, and the two running backs. Under center goes Burton. Heavy to the right this time, and they're going to run that way with Ringer. Ringer bouncing it to the outside, turns the corner. Go, 15, baby. Go, 10, baby. Go, baby. Dives for the end zone, and it is. No, they're going to say. Touchdown. Yes. Woo. He gets the touchdown call, takes it in from 23 yards out. Josh Ringer gets to the edge and scores the touchdown. Well, the official right on the play had his eyes right on it and called nothing. The other official from across the other side of the field. Yeah, he did not go out of bounds, and he broke the plane to the goal. He dove from about the five-yard line, went headlong, holding that ball out for the pylon. And when you get the pylon, you've got a touchdown. One thirty-eight to play. The Trojans, a Nathan McPhee extra point away from going on top, 21-0. That to one nothing. got through there and blocked. And that one got blocked. So the extra point was blocked. And so the score will be 20 to nothing. East Central on top. Here's a beautiful Look at the scoreboard right now of that Josh Ringer touchdown. 138 to play. The Trojans have three rushing touchdowns. Ringer with two. Eli Aston with one. And they're on top, 20 to nothing. Rob, if I may ask, how many yards was that on that run? That was a 23-yard scamper that time. It was a 49-yard drive. What, on three plays, Jerry, or four? Five, actually. Five? That was the longest drive. That was the longest drive of the day so far. Five Five plays, plays. 51 yards. Somebody on the extra point really uh, missed their assignment because one of the Prairie's Cougar up front, he just come right through the middle of the line past the center, and there was no chance for that kick to be remotely good. But what a start for the Trojans. What's interesting, Jerry, about this new Prairie team, this is a good football team. Yeah. And you look back, we talked about that very close game they had uh, in the semi-state round. But in the regional, Jerry, this team got out to a 28 to nothing lead over Northridge in the first quarter uh, before winning that one, going away. Uh, but getting 28 points in the first quarter tells you what this offense is capable of. And yeah. that was against a good Northridge team who had ended their season the year before. But on this one, uh, this time right now, the Trojans are having their way with this new Prairie Ball Club. Well, there is a long way to go yet in this football game, but it's nice when the, your team is ahead 20 to nothing. Still a buck 38 left in the first quarter. So that, That's the one thing that yeah, I'm sure they're absolutely beside themselves as giddy as can be on the sideline, but and, and I'm sure the coach as well. 
You've got to stay focused for four quarters here in a game like this. You cannot let your guard down one myota. So far, Josh Ringer, six attempts, 87 yards, and two touchdowns. Brotherton's carried it five times for 46 yards. And Aston has one carry for 59, Jerry, <laughs> and a touchdown. Great, great start for East Central. Never would have, I don't know that anybody, even the coaches, would have dreamed that they'd have got off to this kind of a start. Three touchdowns and still a minute 38 left in the first quarter. Back deep for New Prairie, standing on their six yard line will be the return men, Mangia and Ryans. There's the McPhee kick, and that one's going to be fielded at about the three yard line. No, it'll hit the end zone, and another touchback. Mangia checked up at the three yard line. I thought he was going to catch it. And Jerry, that ball hit right on yep. the goal line yep. for another touchback for Nathan McPhee. About a foot into the blue of the end zone here. And uh, again, the Cougars got to start from their own 20-yard line. That's a lot of real estate to cover against this defense. And So Jerry, this is a team that likes to run the football, but you're down 20 to nothing. So now you got a tough, a tough decision right yeah. now. If you're Coach Casey Kim, do you dance with who brung you and keep running yeah. the football, or do you drop back and try to throw the ball? Well, I think we've seen it on that second down play on the previous drive where they tried to get it across the middle. Marshall Kamich is going to keep this one on a run, a quarterback keeper. He's got positive yardage all the way out to the 29-yard line, a nine-yard pickup on first down. You know, and this is a game of the, the coaches up in the booth here. they got a great bird's-eye view of what's going on down there on every play on both sides of the ball, and they will make adjustments as need be. But I'm like you, Rob. Where do you get to the point in time when you say, okay, we've got to change things up here. We're going to have to try to throw the ball more. Brett Smith gets credit for the tackle. Second down and one. One receiver to the bottom of the formation. Ball's in the middle of the field. Kamichik going to run it again. Mangia leading the way. Kamichik has room. He gets the first down. Still on his feet at the 35. Drug down at the 36-yard line. In there getting him by the ankles was Andrew Roy until help came. But that's enough for the first down for the Prairie Cougars. The quarterback Kamichik, a lot like Mangia. He is uh, quick and shifty, not very big. Uh, but they can might make guys miss in space. So they, uh, Kamichik takes it 16 yards on two plays, and the Cougars got another first down. Same formation on the receivers to the top this time. Wide side of the field, Mungia gets the handoff. He breaks a tackle, gets across the 40, out to the 41-yard line. He's taken down by a couple of players for the Trojans there. Jacob Roy was in on that one, I believe, number 21. Andrew Roy, I should say, along with Brandon Braden Rouse. Now, they've been real close on about three different occasions already here in this first quarter, and that'll be the last play of the first quarter, uh, with either the quarterback, Kamichik, or Mangia breaking one, and it seems like the last guy was able to bring him down. But we're at the end of the first quarter, Rob. We are indeed, and after one quarter of play in your Class 4A state championship game, the East Central Trojans, Lead the New Prairie Cougars 20 to nothing. We'll take a 60-second timeout and be back with second quarter action right after this on Country 103.9 WRBI and WRBIRadio.com. Maxwell Construction Company would like to wish all schools and student athletes good luck in their sports endeavors. To make a great team, it takes lots of hard work, practice, and dedication. Whether you're on the football field or participating in any sport or school event, Maxwell Construction, your leader in commercial construction and building solutions in Southeast Indiana since 1988. Salutes all the area teams. Let's see. Tommy wants a Heisen new TV. And Bobby wants a Chow Chow ATV. Oh, and Susie's been very good. She wants a Chow Chow dirt bike. Where are we going to get all that, Santa? Easy, Snowball. We'll just make a stop at Hoosier Power Sports. Ho, 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 ho. Santa knows. Hoosier Power Sports is the Tri-State's largest Heisen sales and service center, along with Chow Chow ATVs and dirt bikes, with a large selection in stock for Christmas, and free layaway with $200 down. Hoosier Power Sports, next to East Central High School in St. Leon. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Alongside Jerry Stanger, I am Rob Moorhead back with you to get ready for second quarter action here in this Class 4A state championship game. 20 to nothing, East Central on top. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Ison's Family Pizza, Hoosier Foreign Auto Service, and H&R Block. So far, Jerry, 193 yards for the Trojans, all of them 
Yes, all of them on the ground. One quarter. In 13 rushing attempts, they're averaging 14.8 yards a carry. New Prairie has rushed it 12 times for 43 yards, only 3.6 yards per carry. And New Prairie has thrown the ball. They're the only team that's thrown the ball today. One for two for seven yards so far in this contest. Just a domination right now by this East Central football team. And you can tell neither team is used to these TV timeouts as well because they're back on the field ready to go, and both teams got to retreat to the sideline for the TV timeouts. And uh, this is where you always hear the coaches chuckle and say, Heck, I don't know what to tell the guys. <laughs> what, Mark, what am I, I don't know how to fill all that time. On the TV coverage today is Mark Jaynes and my friend Lance Scheib. Lance was down at East Central last yep. week for the East Central Ron Colley game. Jerry and I both know Lance. He's a good man. But uh, as much as we like Mark James and Lance Lance Scheib, we hope that if you're watching the game, turn it down and get on WRBIRadio.com or the TuneIn Radio app. Or if you're at home and can get 103.9 and listen to the guys that have been bringing you every snap of East Central football this year. Right, The only place you can hear every snap of East Central football in the entire world. WRBI. And yes, I do know there are people that are doing just that, watching and listening to us. Ready for the second quarter as it's second down and five for New Prairie. They are now going left to right. They fake the handoff to Munguia. Kamicha keeps it this time, breaks a tackle. He's across the 45, out to the 47. And partner, I think that'll move the chains yeah. for the Cougars. Nice fake to Munguia going across to the other side. And then Kamicha keeps it coming over here on this side. They do a nice job. Uh, blocking right at the point of attack. And Kamichik and Mangia, they are hard to bring down. They it, it ain't like they're just running straight ahead. They get five, six yards and somebody tackles them. They're hard to bring down and get hard to get a hold of. Kamichik in the shotgun. One receiver to the top of the formation. Mungia stands off his left shoulder. It's going to be a keeper for Kamichik following the block of Mungia, Mungia, I should say. He gets to the midfield and gets a yard into East Central Territory. So we're going to give him a gain of four on the play. Jerry, going to bring up second down and six. They're moving it very well right now. And it's with the quarterback, Mangia, or excuse me, Kamichik doing most of the work. I believe he's carried it all five plays on this drive so far. Talked about Mungia. He comes from Haiti. He moved like in the fourth grade. He was adopted and moved over here uh, to Indiana and began attending school at New Prairie. And has been a nice football player for them. Uh, young man, an excellent running back. They are going to go empty backfield this time, Jerry. Receiver to the top and bottom of the formation. All alone is Kamichik. Brings a man in motion on the jet sweep. They fake it to him. Kamichik keeps it, trying to get to the outside. And he's drugged down and taken for a loss. Back inside New Prairie Carson territory. Kelly. Carson Kelly. A fantastic job on the tackle, Jerry. He gets on the replay here. We have the benefit of and he. You're right, Rob. Just read it perfectly and held on and finally got him down. An open field tackle. Yes. He went down and grabbed him around the ankle, able to pull him down. That's a good form uh, tackling job right there by Carson Kelly. Big play here. So that makes him third and eight on the loss that time. So a big play for the East Central defense. Kamichik waits for it, rolling out to his right. He's going to throw the football. He's under pressure. Shove, but keeps his feet. Still running. Now gets rid of it, and it's almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Carson Pizanka. The intended receiver was number 29 for New Prairie. That's Blake Morse, the tight end. It falls incomplete, and that'll bring up a fourth and long, and the punt team comes back onto the field for New Prairie. If we're fortunate enough to be back in this position next year, and I don't mean here, <laughs> I mean I mean to start the season and do the football game for East Central, we might have to hit up Donnie Stonefield for a monitor like this in the East Central I, press I don't, I don't disagree <laughs> one ounce on that. This is sweet. Kamichik back at his own 36-yard line. Brotherton waits for it at the 15. It's blocked. Blocked by Eli Aston. Blocked. On the ground, East Central recovers. The Trojans will have it in fantastic field position at the 45-yard line of the Cougars. Another blocked kick. Eli Aston again, and again, we got the replay here. It was a good snap and a good hold. Eli just got in there and got his left hand out. Oh, man. And was able to block that. If Kingston Cook could have came up with that football, he'd have had a touchdown and a memory for life. So the Trojans will take over first and 10 at the New Prairie 45-yard line after the block by Eli Aston. 
Young man is just all yeah. over the field, Jerry. No matter where you put him on offense, on defense, on special teams, young man gets it done. Here comes the Trojan offense. This time, Brotherton, for the first time tonight, will be split out at a wide receiver position also for the first time. It'll be a shotgun formation for Cole Burton, and he's back to pass. Looking down the right sideline, he's hit as he throws. Cole took a big shot that time. I believe it was number 88 getting in there on the tackle for, excuse me, on the quarterback pressure. Tavian Ortman, who's their top defender, and uh, that pass falls incomplete. There was a misread either by Burton or by Brotherton there because Cole was expecting Brotherton to cut the route off to the sideline, and Ryan kept on going down the field. I think Cole got dinged up a little bit, but there's yeah. no way he's coming out of this game. And I'm not sure how much it was a misread. As he got hit when he was throwing, Burton laid a lick on him from the blind side. Second 10, hand off to Josh Ringer running to the right. Ringer stringing it out. Going now, turning the corner, getting across the 45 down to the 43 yard line, a gain of two on the play. Going to bring up second down and eight. And Ringer's helmet comes off again. He's going to have to go to the sideline. And that's the thing about why some of our coaches don't want the ball in the air because you got yourself at second and 10. And now you're, excuse me, second, yeah, second and 10. And now you're looking at third and seven. Yeah, we'll give him three on that one, Jerry. He got a little more than I thought. And now, again, a spread formation this time. Trey Omer in the backfield. Rolling to the left is Burton throwing across his body. He has Aston at the 30. It is complete out of the 28-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. And that's enough for the first down. Move the chains for the Trojans. The first completion of the afternoon. A little bit behind Eli. He made a great adjustment on the ball. A 12-yard catch and a first down Trojans at the Cougar 30. And Josh Ringer quickly back in the game. First and 10 from the 30 as they will mark Eli Aston out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Didn't give Miss Forber progress that time. Shotgun formation. Ringer off the right shoulder of Burton. Two receivers at the top. It's a draw. A delayed handoff to Ringer. He loses the football on the ground. I thought it was on the ground, but the officials will say. Yep. No, it's, he's down. Yeah, okay. The he ground caused that fumble. Yep, he was down. And it was a draw that time. It made it look like Burton was going to pass the football. He handed it off late, and Josh lost at three on the play, Jerry. Yeah. You'll see it here on the replay. Number yeah, 44. He, clearly. Clearly the ground calls that fumble. There's no even question about it, but. He did get a loss of three yards, so we may see the ball in the air again here. Nathan Andresek on the tackle that time. Under center, hand off to Ringer. Ringer running straight ahead this time. Gets across the 30, back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe the 29-yard line. So he gets a gain of four, Jer, but it's going to bring up a third down and nine. Yeah, they'll give him four. Going to be third and nine from just inside the Cougar 30. Clock runs with 7.50. Left to play here in half number one. Quite honestly, ladies and gentlemen, a half that has been dominated by the East Central Trojans. Interesting here what they might elect to do if, indeed, it comes to a fourth down when you're inside the opponent's 30-yard line. Shotgun formation in motion. They're going to throw a little screen pass to Ryan really, Brotherton. Number 44 again, Josh. Or, uh, excuse me, Rob. Nathan Andresik on the tackle and a loss. A four on the play it goes back to fourth and 11. My bad on the call that time, Jerry. I was no. trying to say that Josh Ringer was in motion, and he, he was. was. They were trying to set up a screen to the Ryan Brotherton. Brotherton, but Andresik read it all the way. And now it's fourth and 11, but where the football is placed at the 31, the Trojan offense stays on the field. They go three wide receivers to the top. Brotherton alone at the bottom of the formation. Burton in the shotgun with Ringer off his left shoulder. Back to pass is Burton. Looking across the middle, has Aston, and it's complete for a first down and more to the 12-yard line. Eli Aston on the reception, first and 10 for the Trojans. 19 yards and knee central first down, and I'll tell you what, that is as much mustard and as much moxie as Cole Burton has had on a pass this year. He rifled that rascal down the middle of the field right into the breadbasket of Eli Aston. What a throw and what a conversion to keep this drive alive. Six and a half Second quarter and counting. Aston in motion, then inside. They fake the handoff. Eli keeps it running around the right side, looking for a block inside the five. Taken down at the three-yard line is Eli Aston. 
Nine yards on the carry. Going to bring up second down and one. Now they're going to bring in another tight end. Actually bring in, yeah, another tight end and another offensive lineman here. They're going to go heavy right here. The elephant formation for the Trojans. Eight offensive linemen heavy to the right side. Burton will go under center. He'll have Brotherton on the right, Ringer on the left. Second and one from the three. They're not thinking first down, Jerry. They're thinking touchdown. There it is. There it is. It's a handoff to Josh Ringer from three yards out. Ringer takes it in for his third touchdown of the afternoon. What a drive. What a fourth down conversion by Cole Burton. And, uh, you know, they was talking about this kid as he was growing up, coming up through the ranks, junior high. And, you know, you talk to a lot of the coaches about him and, they said one thing that he has, he doesn't always make the best decisions or the right ones, but he's got a tremendous amount of moxie. And, boy, you have that in your quarterback. you got something special. That pass to Eaton, uh, Eli Aston, that was a thing of beauty. Nathan McPhee's extra point is good, and that makes our score East Central 27, New Prairie nothing. A 55-yard drive that time. For the East Central Trojans. 45. 45-yard drive. That Oh, that's right. I thought they started on their own 45. They started on the 45, thank you, Jerry, mm-hmm. of New Prairie. So a 45-yard drive, and the Trojans go on top. 27-0. Josh Ringer, three touchdowns on the afternoon. And, Jerry, they've shown they can score by run, run, run. This time they showed, although it took a little yeah. longer, yeah. they threw a few passes into the mix. End result ends up being the same, and when they wanted to score the touchdown, they went back under center, handed the ball off, played East Central Power football. Yeah, they really did a nice job on that drive. And, and again, what a conversion on fourth and about 12 uh, by Cole Burton. And credit his offensive line that gave him the time because uh, that's a fourth and 12, not fourth and two. Eli had to get down the field and shake his man. But, man, what a throw by Cole Burton. I mean, he put it absolutely right on the money. And the defender was right on Eli Aston. There, there, he just nothing he could do about it. When you make a throw like that, you tip your hat to the quarterback and the receiver. Uh, but a great job again by East Central. What a start. Halfway through the second quarter, East Central leading 27 to nothing. Jerry, yes, you heard me right. 27 <laughs> to nothing. Jerry, you talked about that. Hayden Scott was the defender at that time, the 5'11", 167-pound sophomore. He's got 94 tackles. More importantly, the young man has four interceptions on the ear. And uh, Eli Aston yeah. ran a great route. But what about the ball? All Cole Burton threw there to put it right on him. That set him up first and 10 from the 12-yard line. And the Trojans able to cash in and get another score. Just a great job. I mean, that that's one of those that are every single guy out there, all 11, did their job. Your, your offensive linemen, your tight ends that you got in there. Uh, Aston run a great route. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go over to the walkthrough yesterday morning. It was really cool. It was really cool to, uh, to have that access to uh, hear the coaches speak to the kids out one last time. And uh, it, it's just and one of the things they said of all 11 guys on the field, do your job. How many times has Bill Belichick said that in an NFL Films clip? Just do your job and we'll be fine. And so far, so good up here today. 38 rushing TDs on the year for Josh Ringer. Three today. McPhee's kickoff fielded at the eight-yard line by Ryans. Running to his left. Now turns it up across the 20. Gets out to about the 24-yard line. And that's where this next possession will start for New Prairie, which quite honestly, Jerry, New Prairie has had trouble getting anything going offensively uh, so far in this ball game. When you look at New Prairie, uh, they've had a difficult time basically getting yard- yardage, be it on the ground or through the air. Yeah. And uh, just a tough time. As if you look at New Prairie, they have rushed the ball for only, what, 51 yards so far in this ball game, And they've only got 56 total yards of offense. Kamichik keeps it on a quarterback keeper this time, gets out to the 30-yard line. We'll give him a gain of six on the play. Really doing a nice job uh, are the Cougars running up the middle with Kamichik just on the quarterback keeper. They've had a lot of success there. Uh, the problem is when they've tried to go wide on the Trojans, get out wide on the edges outside the hash marks, that's where the quickness and the pursuit 
uh, V Central has allowed them to make some tackles for little or no gain or even a loss. But up the middle, they've had success so far. Second down and four, a heavy formation here for New Prairie to the right side. They'll run that way. And now uh, uh, taking the handoff is Mungia and, and changes field, running out to the left. He started to the right, saw nothing was there, spun out to the left, and he gets a big gainer, Jerry. Yep. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That's a first down. In the backfield, Kingston Cook had him around the shoulder pads, and he got away. And then he took it down the New Prayer sideline for their far and away their biggest gain of the afternoon out of bounds at the... Well, they're going to mark him out of bounds way back at the 42. 42 of New Prairie. That's a first down. Dylan Maxwell pushed him out of bounds. We'll get credit for the tackle. Heavy formation again to the right. They have two blocking backs. They hand to one of them in the tight end. He tries to go on a little counter play, running to the left, and he's going to lose. Well, yeah, they'll give him positive yardage of one. On the carry was Tavion Ortman. He's Connor their, Coon. I'm sorry, bro. They'll go right. He's their best defender, Jerry, but also took the ball on a ball carry that time as a tight end, and it's going to bring second down and nine. Connor Coon got out there again, brought him down. And if you're East Central and you want you want to let New Prairie run the ball, be my guest. You're up 27 to nothing. Clock runs, four minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Second and nine. Shotgun formation now. Both tight ends shift sides of the field over to the left. They're going to run it that way with Kamichik. Kamichik trying to get around the corner there. Will get across the 45 out to the 46-yard line. He gets a gain of three, but it's going to bring up third down and six. Not much there. A third and long situation in a team that's really not what you would say a passing team, so to speak. So this will be an interesting call right here. I Wouldn't mean, they, you're down 27 to nothing. You've got to start moving the ball down the field and getting first downs. No wide receivers in the game, Jerry. The two tight ends right behind the line of scrimmage on the right behind the offensive line. They're going to roll that way with Kamichik. He's under pressure trying to get rid of it. He does so, and the short. pass is complete, but it's well short. Well short. In fact, it's even short of the line to scrimmage. It was complete to Cole Staley, uh, the senior and they're going to mark him all the way back at the 44-yard line, Jerry. Going to bring up fourth down in about eight. East Central took a timeout, Rob. Understandably, the clock yeah. stops with 3.31. The Trojans want to get that offense back on the field again, Jerry. Uh, they're, again, the way that the game has gone so far, I, I, I honestly and truly would not be surprised if New Perry. They do get the ball to start the second half. Do they gamble here on fourth and about seven and try to go for this? And they, they have shown no propensity at all to slow down East Central's offense. Now, are they going to try to go for this on fourth and seven on their side of the 50? It was on East Central's 44-yard line. I think they would definitely go for it. This one is on their own 44-yard line. They got to get to the Trojan 48, so it's actually a third or a fourth down and eight. And uh, the timeout by East Central may help them decide what they want to do because they've shown no inclination to bring the punt team on the field before East Central called a timeout. Now, I don't know if they have or not. There's a lot of players moving back and forth over there in and out of the huddle. Yeah, I'm not sure if there might have been another timeout called or it's just an extra long timeout here, Jerry. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. Again, 331 left to play. East Central on top, 27 to nothing. So I don't know if uh, this long timeout may change their mind. Like I said, do you want to try to build some momentum and get a score here before half, knowing you get the ball to start the third quarter? Or are you just going to punt it away and hope your defense can find a way to slow down East Central's run game? Jerry, so far in this ball game, Kamichik has carried it 10 times for 39 yards. Mungia has carried it 7 times for 29 yards. And uh, really, that's the only guys that are doing much offensively. Ryans has one reception for seven yards. Staley has the one reception he just got, but it was for a loss of one. So only 73 total yards running the ball and it looks like a total yard six. So 79 yards of total offense so far for the new Prairie Cougars and they will indeed go back in punt formation. Kamichik waits back at his 30 yard line for the snap. On the 22-yard line of East Central is Ryan Brotherton waiting for this punt. Last punt was blocked. Kamichik gets this one, a line drive kick that bounces at the 30. 
Brotherton's going to field it at the 20 and finally fall on it back at the 15-yard line. He's covered there by Bryce Van Brani, and that'll set East Central up. At the 15, 16-yard line. A little bit of a rumble down there in the crowd because Ryan was actually on the ground and a new Prairie player coming and pounced on him. And obviously when you're on the ground in football, once you're down, you're down and you couldn't be hit. But really no harm there at all. And uh, just good, if nothing else, that East Central's got possession here and uh, Let's maybe see. a chance to score or at least maybe get wind this clock down and get a couple first downs. Yeah, Jerry, their worst field position of the day. They go back under center here. Hand this one off to Josh Ringer, running around to the right. Ringer gets across the 20, out to the 26-yard line. First They'll down. give him the 27, a gain of 11 on the carry. First, pardon me, first and 10. Trojans. Go ahead, Jerry. I was going to say give Ringer 11 on that one. Trojans still, I believe, to have two timeouts left. Brotherton running to the left. Brotherton gets to the corner, gets out across the 30, down to the 32-yard. Counting till halftime, East Central leading 27 to nothing. Wheaton asked to go to the top of the formation this time. Ball on the near hash. Handoff is to Brotherton running to the short side of the field. Bounces off the first would-be tackler. Gets out to the 34-yard line. A gain of two more. Going to bring up third down and three. You know, Ryan did what he was supposed to do there, I'm sure, with the design of the play. But right when he got to the line of scrimmage, if he cuts it back, man, there was a hole there that he could have exploited and he might still be running. But as it is, it's second, or excuse me, third and three. Clock runs 225. Excuse me, 226. It stopped out of bounds. Back under center. Goes Burton. This time handed to Ringer. Ringer running to his right. Gets a block now across the 37. Looking to get out near the 40, but he dove forward, got Jerry. Got down. just enough for the first down as they'll mark him at a 38 yard line. Nice tackle out there by New Prairie's number eight, Bryce Van Brainy. First and ten for the Trojans. That moves the chains. Clock runs at 2-10 here in the first half. Brotherton running to his left. Nice job yep. getting in there on the tackle was Cole Staley. No gain on the play. Nice job by Staley coming down the line of scrimmage. Got off this, this block and wrapped up Brotherton back. Uh, they'll give him the line of scrimmage. I was wondering in a, in a position like this when you're Deep on your side of the field. I think eventually you're going to have to put a pass or two in the air, and it looks like they might right here. Second 10. Shotgun formation. Three receivers at the top. Burton back to pass. Under pressure. Escapes now looking down the field for Aston. Overthrows him. Almost intercepted out there, but the ball falls incomplete. Bryce Van Brainy was on the coverage. And it'll bring up third down and long. And Jerry, need to get a legal ID in here. You're listening to Country 103.9. <laughs> 103.9 WRBI, Batesville, Indiana. I think we might have our first flag of the day, or do we? And you make a great point, partner, because I haven't even been thinking about that. We no. haven't talked about one penalty in this state championship game. And uh, actually not, Jerry. They just marked it back at the line of scrimmage. Or did they know? Well, I, there yeah, it is. an eligible man downfield. You field. got it. You got it. I, what confused me, they marked it at the original line of scrimmage, yeah. third and ten. Ineligible man downfield, and that's going to bring up the third down and 10. And I think uh, that penalty was declined by New Prairie. Trips to the top of the formation. Brothers and alone at the bottom. They hand it off to Ringer. Ringer out across the 45-yard line out near midfield. Enough for the first down. Move the chains for East Central. They sent everybody to the right. Cole Burton went to the right like he was going to roll out and pass that way. And he makes an inside handoff to Josh Ringer. And Ringer cuts it back. For a huge gainer, Jerry. What a well-designed play. And uh, initially, what good thing Josh was able to hold on to that football because he got hit up high and uh, was able to hold on to it. And uh, what a big play. Takes it out to midfield. Finally taken down by Brock Sinka. And uh, Trojans will have it first and 10 from midfield. A timeout on the field. Let's take a 30-second timeout as well. We'll be back with more 
of the first half action on the Class 4A state championship game on Country 103.9 WRBI and WRBIRadio.com. Untangling your headphones, finding the right remote, saying goodbye to your favorite shirt that hasn't fit in 10 years. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who live in your community and answer when you call so you can worry about more important things like finding a new favorite shirt. That's simple human sense. Ask the professionals of Southeastern Insurance in Batesville or Greensburg if auto owners make sense for you. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Rob Moorhead, Jerry Stanger back with you. This afternoon's game brought to you on 103.9 WRBI by Blimpy of St. Leon, Fetty Auto Body, and Straber Oil. First and ten Trojan shotgun formation. Two receivers top, two bottom, Burton back to pass. Cole looking for Josh Ringer, who is split out wide at the 45-yard line. It's incomplete. Second down. That one, Cole had a little bit too much mustard on it. Maybe Josh could not come down with it. That stops the clock. 127 left in the half. Ball at midfield. Trojans lead 27 to nothing. They keep Ringer split out wide to the left side of the formation or to the home side here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Trey Omer in the backfield off the left shoulder of Burton. Burton looking to the top. Has a man out there. Ooh. Brotherton. And Ryan Brotherton drug down or he was going to go down yeah. the sideline. Brotherton gets positive yardage there out to about the 43-yard line. But a nice tackle out there on the play. you got to get a number. I think it was number eight, Bryce Van Brainy out there. And now it's third down and three for the Trojans. They go right to the line of scrimmage. Trips to the bottom. Brotherton alone at the top. They hand this one off to Trey, Trey Omer. Omer. And Omer bounced off the first tackle. Second effort. The ball is loose. And it's turned over and recovered by New Prairie. So I thought he was bouncing out of there, Jerry, because I saw the action move, but it was actually the ball coming out. Going to see it right here. Yep, number 11 put a helmet on the football, and it was recovered by big number 44. Cole Staley caused the fumble. It was recovered by Nathan Andresek, and with 55 seconds left, New Prairie will have the football. Our own 39, Rob. On their own 39. Thank you, partner. you got to make sure you do not give a score up here. 55 seconds left in the half. You don't want that turnover to be a turning point. Back to pass. Looking now, scrambling. Kamichik throws it incomplete. Kind of right between two potential intended receivers there. The closest one was number 31. Bo Kamichik, probably a brother, I would guess, and going to bring up second down. Dallas Ryans actually had gotten behind everybody that time, but I don't think Kamichik, with him scrambling and running out to the sideline here, could not really focus in on where he was at. Clock stops. 47 seconds left to play in the half. Second down and 10. Kamichik in the shotgun. Two receivers at the bottom, one at the top. Mungi off his right shoulder. Kamichik back to pass. Across the middle, has a man, and it's incomplete. He had that football and then was hit a ton yep. by Maxwell and number 21 for the Trojans, Andrew Roy. The intended receiver out there that time was number 25, Dallas Ryans. That would have been a first down into East Central Territory. Great defense that time, Jerry. That was a really, really good throw to Ryans. He put it right in there perfectly, but Matthew Roy more than Dylan Maxwell got his helmet and shoulder pads right on the arms and the ball of the receiver, and it popped right out. Big third down here. 39 seconds left to play in the half. The clock has stopped on the incompletion. Third down and 10. Two receivers to the top. They hand it off to Mangia. Mangia tries to get upfield and unable to do so. He's met by a host of East Central tacklers. He will get positive yardage out to the 42-yard line, but it's going to bring up fourth down and seven. Jerry, the clock runs with 25 seconds left. So far, no one has called timeout as the clock runs down to 20. Looks like both teams are going to be content to let this go to the half. It sure does, Rob, because there is nobody taking the timeout. New Pereira does not have to run a play. 
Indeed, they do not, my well, friend. It looks like they're maybe going to try to trick East Central here, but they've got to be on guard for anything. Three, two, one. They do snap and it to Kamichik. And they do get it snapped off. Kamichik back to pass, under pressure, runs into his own man, still on his feet now, rolling to the right, directing traffic. Kamichik near the sideline. It's complete to Ryans, but he's taken down End just the on the East Central side of midfield. Eli Aston on the tackle. The clock hits zeros, and we have indeed reached the end of half number one. The East Central fans come to their feet and let out a roar as their Trojans jog off the field with a 27 to nothing halftime lead in the Class 4A state championship game. Jerry and I are going to take about a two-minute timeout here. We come back, we'll run down a little bit of what happened in the first half, and then we've got an interview for you with Sunman Dearborn Superintendent Dr. Andrew Jackson. That'll come up later on in our halftime show. For now, East Central on top 27 to nothing. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout on Country 103.9 WRBI and WRBIRadio.com. Thinking of moving? Maybe settling in a state? How about both? One call covers it all. With Cornerstone Realty and Lutz Auction Service, now conveniently located under one roof near Dover, Indiana. Both Dale and Randy Lutz, as realtors and auctioneers, have been serving the community for over 30 years. Their profession is turning your assets into cash. Cornerstone Realty and Lutz Auction Service, where they're in your corner. Call 812-637-6666. Whitewater Motors in West Harrison's the most trusted name in the car business. At Whitewater Motors, they treat each customer like they're special because they are. You have high expectations, and the staff of Whitewater Motors enjoys the challenge of exceeding them every time. So when you're in the market for a pre-owned vehicle, stop by Whitewater Motors in West Harrison and let them show you. You'll see why they're the most trusted name in the car business. Online anytime at whitewatermotors.com. Huber Trucking, just off I-74 in Sunman, is a proud supporter of East Central High School football. They congratulate the Trojan players, their parents, and coaching staff on a great season and are rooting them on in the playoffs. Call Huber Trucking at 812-623-3570 to haul sand, gravel, and any kind of stone product. That's Huber Trucking, 812-623-3570, a proud supporter of East Central High School football. Grain fed, farm raised beef by Dale and Randy Lutz. Free from any hormones or growth stimulants. Cut at local processors. The dream dinner. Well, you're in luck. Lutz beef is for sale. Lutz beef can easily be picked up any Wednesday and during Saturday auctions at the Lutz Auction Center, right off Highway 1 in Dover. Get your fillets, ribeyes, roasts, stew meat, ground beef, and so much more. They even have quarter, half, and whole beefs available. Lutz beef, make it what's for your dinner. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Welcome back to Lucas Oil Stadium. Wow, is it fun to say that. Here for the Class 4A state championship game between the East Central Trojans and the New Prairie Cougars. East Central is on top in this one by a score of 27 to nothing at the half. Here's how things went in half number one. New Prairie won the toss. They deferred choice. Allowed East Central to get the football first. The Trojans started at their own 29-yard line. They went four plays in 71 yards, capped off by a 59-yard sweep from Eli Aston all the way to the end zone. McPhee's extra point was good. The Trojans went on top 7-0. McPhee kicked the ball off into the end zone for the touchback. So New Prairie took over at their own 20-yard line. They got two first downs in the drive before the East Central defense stiffened and forced the punt. The Trojans took over their second possession at their own 28-yard line. This time, they went 72 yards on four plays, capped off by a 32-yard touchdown run on an inside handoff to Josh Ringer. The extra point by Nate McPhee was good, and with 5.19 to play in in quarter number one, the Trojans were already on top 14 to nothing. The kickoff gave New Prairie the football at their own 27-yard line. The Trojan defense forced a three-and-out to get the football back for East Central. They took over on their own 49-yard line. It took them five plays this time to go 51 yards. The scoring play was a 23-yard touchdown run by Josh Ringer, only this time the extra point was blocked, and with 138 to play in the quarter, the Trojans were on top 20 to nothing. Another Nathan McPhee touchback gave New Prairie the ball at their own 20-yard line. 
as we closed out quarter number one and to start quarter number two, New Prairie was facing a fourth down. They brought the punt team on, and on comes Eli Aston to block the punt, setting the Trojans up in their best field position of the day at the New Prairie 45-yard line. They brought the passing game out during this particular series of downs, and they had a huge fourth down conversion, a pass from Cole Burton to Eli Aston to set the Trojans up first and down, first and ten from the 12-yard line. This 45-yard drive ended with a three-yard touchdown run by Josh Ringer with 5.52 to play in the half. McPhee's extra point was good, put the Trojans on top 27 to nothing. The defense came on, forced another punt by New Prairie, got the ball back, and the Trojans were driving. They took over at their own 16. They got into New Prairie territory, but Trey Omer fumbled the football, and it was recovered by New Prairie. The fumble was forced by Cole Staley. It was recovered by Nathan Andresiak, and New Prairie brought the offense back out on the field for one final time at their own 39-yard line. The clock ran out on New Prairie as they still had the football, and the clock ended went to zeros, and we ended the first half with the East Central Trojans on top, 27 to nothing. As Jerry and I look down from our press box position high above the field here at Lucas Oil Stadium, we're looking at the East Central Trojan cheerleaders putting on a halftime performance. And partner, all in all, a pretty good first half for the Trojans. Yeah, other than the late turnover there by Trey Omer into the game, uh, it's been a, a near picture perfect performance by this team on both sides of the ball. Yes, they've uh, given up a few yards to New Prairie on the ground. Uh, I think New Prairie's just completed the one pass early. Um, but, uh, you know, what can you say about the defense? They have really done it all year long from beginning to end, and they're doing it here tonight. Look at some of their playoff games. One was 55, one was 47, one was 42, one was 49. Uh, their offensive average uh, even higher than 35 uh, once they got to the tournament. But uh, a tremendous job by East Central's defense so far here today. We've been talking about them all year. Uh, Doug Hogue does a great job with these guys. Uh, the run game has been fantastic so far. Uh, only the one penalty, which really didn't mean a whole lot uh, to begin uh, between both teams. That's the, that's one of the most wonderful things uh, that happened here in the first half. Uh, one penalty between the two schools. The officials are letting them play the game and decide it between themselves, and that's what you wanted to see in the state championship game. Uh, both teams really a good crowds uh, here. I would have to say, and I'm tr- trying to be biased, I think the East Central crowd is a little bit uh, larger than New Prairies, so uh, just a great atmosphere up here. Uh, and again, uh, be sure, and uh, if you're able to, uh, come up here tomorrow afternoon and root on the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Uh, the Trojans got another half to go. They have a 27 to nothing to lead. Uh, but how sweet would it be if the Trojans could come out of here and hold on to this and win, and the Tigers could have come up here tomorrow? Boy, they got a tough opponent in the Indianapolis Chatard. So, uh, well, that's that's going to be a really good game. That one on the John Hare website is basically a pick 'em. Uh, they do have Lawrenceburg favored by one point, uh, but it's less than uh, less than less than one percentage point are the odds that either one of those teams will win. That is uh, that far apart. So uh, all the best to uh, Coach Kaniga and the Lawrenceburg Tigers tomorrow afternoon. And again, as I said in the pregame, we don't want to leave out the North Decatur Chargers. What a job by Steve Stern and his team uh, to make it all the way to the semi-state round uh, for the first time in their school history. And uh, win or lose, uh, Dearborn County, you've got a lot to be proud of for your high school sports teams, that's for sure. Indeed. We're going to take a two-minute timeout here when we come back. I'll have an interview with Sunman Dearborn Community School Superintendent Dr. Andrew Jackson here at the half where East Central is on top of New Prairie by a score of 27 to nothing. You're listening to the high school football Class 4A state championship game on Country 103.9 WRBI. 
craving some Hut Brothers pizza? Yeah. Or you need a snack right now? Uh-huh. Is your car a dirty mess? Well. Is your mouth as dry as the Sahara? Olive Shell Station and Car Wash is right where Interstate 74, Highway 46, and Highway 1 all meet in St. Leon. They can help you refuel, top off your tank with top-rated Shell gasoline, then get your car looking spiffy in their easy-to-use car wash, all while you run into Olive Shell for some Hut Brothers pizza, snacks, and drinks. Olive Shell, the most convenient convenience store in southeastern Indiana. Guys and gals, Barney at Car Country Harrison, Car Country Roar, and I'm telling you what the hot news is. New car rates on used cars, 260 cars in inventory, guaranteed credit, a staff that just tops any staff out there. You need to come and see me, guys and gals. I've got it all. Stop down and see me, Harrison, Aurora, or remember, if you need a ride, I'll send a guy to get you. Hornberger and Sons and Sunman is your start to finish plasterer and drywall EIFS contractor. Family owned and operated and serving the tri state area since 1953, they have the experience that your job deserves. They offer interior and exterior cladding services for both light commercial and residential clients. Install and finish new drywall, as well as performing repairs and renovations on existing interior and exterior walls. Hornberger and Sons and Sunman. Visit their website at hornbergersons.com and like them on Facebook. What the Fumella? Have you tried the new Fumella, a smoked mozzarella cheese from Ison's Family Pizza? It's a sister cheese to our awesome mozzarella provolone mix. Fumella is a smoky whole milk mozzarella premium cheese from Wisconsin. Available for a limited time on any of Ison's Family Pizza's made-to-order pizzas, hoagies, breadsticks, yum, and salads. Ison's Family Pizza, 812-933-0333, IsonsFamilyPizza.com, and downtown Batesville. What the Fumella? Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Welcome back to the halftime show here on WRBI, live from Lucas Oil Stadium, where it's halftime in the Class 4A state championship game between East Central and New Prairie. I'm joined at this time by Superintendent of the Sunman Dearborn Community School Corporation, Dr. Andrew Jackson. Dr. Jackson, first of all, congratulations on having an East Central team up here again uh, representing the school and the community in the state finals. Thank you, Rob. Uh, it's great to be up here. Uh, very proud of our boys and our coaches and their effort they've made this this uh, season, and their hard work is certainly paying off. Andrew, you, you look at the team, how well they have done, and something that I think has always been a staple of East Central football is the support from the community, and I'm sure today, I know today from being here, is absolutely no different. We have a great crowd here. Uh, they're loud. They're excited for their team, and if uh, our listeners probably saw on social media this morning we had a very large crowd to send our students off, our players off this morning. It came out early, uh, and it was followed by some uh, fire trucks, some some emergency with the sirens on, and the two team buses. So we're excited to get them up here. Andrew, for years ago when this football job opened, you guys turned to a young guy, but a young guy who is deeply rooted in this football program, who played in this program, coached in this program, and now is running the program in Jake Miners. And you guys got to be. Really Really proud of the job he's doing for you. He is just an excellent uh, teacher and coach. Uh, very proud of the way he represents our community, our school corporation, and our high school. I couldn't be happier uh, for the young man and the job he's done. He's been very successful, and I we never na- never doubted it. Well, Andrew, we want to again thank you for taking time to join us here in the halftime show, and uh, wish East Central best of luck here in the second half. Sure, hope you guys get to celebrate a state championship after a while. Thank you, Rob. Go Trojans. Thank you very much. That's Dr. Andrew Jackson, superintendent of the Sunman Dearborn Community School Corporation. And we'll be back with more of our halftime show right after this. You're listening to Class 4A State Championship Football on Country 103.9 WRBI. Winter's coming. So before you travel over the river and through the woods to visit the family, make sure you call and schedule your car's winter service at Hoosier Foreign Auto Service. At HFAS, they specialize in most foreign vehicles, from oil changes to major repairs. Call Hoosier Foreign Auto Service to schedule your car. 812-576-2181. Hoosier Foreign Auto Service is located next to East Central High School in St. Leon. You already know H&R Block does taxes, but you may not know you can get expert help in person or virtually, or that our tax pros average 10 years of experience. You can even request the same tax pro every year, and your biggest possible refund is always guaranteed. At H&R Block, help is here. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Limitations apply. See hrblock.com slash guarantees. H&R Block, with convenient locations in Batesville, Sunman, Brookville, Greensburg, and Versailles. 
St. Leon Blimpy Subs, located in the BP station on Route 1 next to I-74. Need a breakfast sandwich or packing your lunch? Blimpy opens daily at 5 a.m. Enjoy fresh sliced bread, sliced to order meats, toppings prepped and sliced every morning, piled high to satisfy your hunger. Blimpy is a great catering option for all those holiday get-togethers. Between the Blimpy sliders are the wraps you can't go wrong. Blimpy gift cards are always a great idea. Call 812-576-4444 and let Karen help you with your catering needs. Attention all motorists. The white-tailed deer are on the move and crossing the roads. Joe Fetty and his staff at Fetty's Auto Body remind you to be careful when driving your vehicle. And if you meet up with a white-tailed deer, have no fear. Call Fetty's Auto Body to get your car back in gear. If your vehicle has small dings or dents, let Fetty's Auto Body use veinless dent repair. Or if it's a major collision repair, Fetty's will work with all insurance companies. And all work is warranted. Fetty's Auto Body on North Dearborn Road in Sunman. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Big thank you to Brent Lee back in the studio running the board tonight. Today's game being brought to you by Straber Oil, Maxwell Construction, Southeastern Insurance, and Tom TB Auto Center and the Car Country family of stores. Rob Moorhead, Jerry Stanger back with you. Are East Central is on top in this one by a score of 27 to nothing. And looking out at the stat sheet, Cole Burton is four for seven from the air for 36 yards, a completion percentage of 57. But the damage being done on the ground, Josh Ringer has carried 13 times. He's already over 100 yards rushing at 121. Three touchdowns and a long of 32. Eli Aston has two carries for 68 yards and a touchdown. Ryan Brotherton has eight carries for 53 yards, a long of 27. Through the air, Aston has two receptions, a total of 31 yards. Brotherton has two receptions as well for five yards. So far, so good for this East Central Trojan offense, Jerry. Just a great job. Uh, You hate to see the fumble there, and Trey Omer got – you hate to see it happen to him, a senior on the team. Gets his first carry up in a state championship game, and he puts it on the ground. I got a feeling, though, that uh, they may give him a chance to redeem himself somewhere along the line, hopefully in the second half. Uh, the, the main thing is now, if you're East Central, not to lose your focus. Uh, obviously, this team came out incredibly focused in the first half and especially in the first quarter and on the first drive of the game. Only took them four plays uh, to go 71 yards and put uh, seven points on the scoreboard. So you want to keep your foot on the pedal. Uh, you want to keep pressing. You want to keep executing. You want to keep doing everything you did. You want to play this game like you're starting over at 0-0, even though you've got 27 and the other team doesn't have anything. You cannot take, absolutely, you cannot take anything for granted. This is New Prairie team who's got some good players on both sides of the ball. You can't let them get this feeling or get a sense that they can get back into this game here in the second half. I'm sure if your offense on East Central, unless a uh, dire situation absolutely calls for it, uh, I'd be real surprised if uh, Cole Burton puts the ball in the air unless it's uh, a pa- no pass play is guaranteed. Uh, but it's, a, it's one of those pass plays where it's going to be a high percentage uh, throw to somebody, maybe out in the flat or a little quick hitter uh, across the middle. They're going to keep it on the ground. They're going to pound Ringer. They're going to pound Brotherton and uh, try to shorten the game up here in the second half. The biggest thing uh, to me, uh, not to take anything, again, for granted, uh, you got to come out in the second half. As New Prairie gets the ball to start this third quarter, you have to make sure defensively that your guys are ready to go here and you come out and you shut New Prairie down and don't let them uh, put points on the board here in this first drive of the third quarter. You want to keep them zeros on the scoreboard, get the ball back to your offense, and then I think the chances are good that your team will be in good shape uh, the rest of the way after that. Jerry, talk about a job by the Trojan defense. Listen to these offensive stats for New Prairie. Kamichik has 10 attempts rushing for 39 yards. Mangia has 8 attempts. And just as I'm reading those, Jerry, my screen goes haywire on me. So I'm going to have to... <laughs> Come on, Mom! Going to have to let that uh, re, re, uh, reload as uh, Lisa comes back in to uh, make up for my uh, technological <laughs> shortfalls here. But... Uh, where I was getting, Jerry, is this defense of Doug Hoag's has really been fantastic today. They've done just an outstanding job.
a team in New Prairie that comes in averaging 352 yards a game, 267 of those on the ground, and they've gotten just very, very little of that so far as we get the uh, as we get the view back here, Jerry. I'll, I'll find it. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I, I, I think the. I don't think they've even have 100 yards of offense so far here in the uh, first quarter. I believe Kamichek has completed out one pass early, but uh, as I said earlier, they have found some success running up the middle with the quarterback, but uh, when the East Central defense has had to make a play on uh, a third down, they've made it. Uh, the only time they were in East Central territory is, uh, oh, wait a minute, no, I don't think they were in East Central territory. Uh, it might have been once one drive earlier. Uh, they did cross the 50. Uh, they did get into East Central Territory once. Even on the fumble, uh, that was on, on their side of the 50-yard line. So they've been in East Central Territory one time in five possessions uh, this half. And they have all ended in, in a uh, punt. Uh, Eli Aston had the punt block. And then, of course, at the end of the half, they just threw three passes and then let the clock, clock run out. So uh, it really couldn't have, met, couldn't have went much better for the Trojans in that first half. Uh, other than uh, the McPhee missing the extra point and the fumble, which proved to be harmless. Uh, but you'd have liked to have seen the Trojans, if nothing else, there at the end of the half, maybe get McPhee in position uh, for a field goal chance. But as it is, they're still ahead 27 to nothing. We've got 24 minutes of football left to go, and we'll probably get that underway in just a very short period of time. And I got my view back, brother. So, Fungia <laughs> has eight attempts. Thank you, Lisa, for 32 yards, a long of 12. Uh, Brzezinski, one carry for four yards. Ortman, one carry for one, carry for one yard. Through the air, Kamichik is three for seven for 16 yards. Uh, his completions went to Dallas Ryans. He had two of them for 17 yards. And Cole Staley caught one but was dropped for a loss on the play. So Jerry, from through the air, they have 76 yards. On the ground, they have 16. That's 92 yards of total offense. Again, for a team that comes in averaging 352 a game. As I look down there, Jer, I noticed uh, strength coach Stephen Medlock warming the guys up yep. down in the far end zone here. Uh, not only is he the strength coach, I think he is also the uh, motivational coach always pumped up uh, is Stephen Medlock uh, doing a great job for this East Central Ball Club. You're exactly right. He is one of the guys that is the motivational, uh, inspirational dude for the whole entire team. If somebody needs a uh, Somebody to get in their ear. Coach Medlock is the guy to do it for sure. But uh, all in all, uh, you you really again you can't ask for much better than this. If you're East Central, twenty-seven to nothing at half, you're on top in the Class Four A state championship game. You've got another half to go. You just got to keep doing what you do, and that's the, you know. And again, act like it's nothing to nothing, and you got to play every play like it's your last you'll ever play. Jerry, that's a wrap on our halftime shows. We're just about ready to start the second half. Nathan McPhee will handle the kickoff duties today. He's had two go into the end zone so far on this afternoon for touchbacks. And again, deep for New Prairie will be Noah Munguia and Dallas Ryans. They'll stand back on their five-yard line waiting on this kick. New Prairie trailing East Central 27 to nothing. As we start the second half, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Casey McKim decides to do here with this new Prairie offense as McPhee puts his foot into this one. It'll be fielded at the five-yard line by Ryans. Ryans across the 15 to the 20, now 25. Gets out across the 27, 30-yard line, out to the 35, and that's where this first drive will start for New Prairie. One of the longest returns of the year, really, against uh, East Central's kick team. Nathan a little short down to the five-yard line. Give the New Prairie returner a chance to return it. Got a 30-yard return right there, Jerry. Yep, yep. And we're going to mark it right on the 35. Ryan's average is 17 yards per return. Other than the fumble return, that's New Prairie's best starting field position right there. Kamichik, shotgun formation. Mingia behind him. They have a blocking back right behind the line of scrimmage. And then two receivers to the top of the formation. Here comes Mangia running to the right, and he barely gets yep. back to the line he of scrimmage. The Trojan linebackers saw that one coming, Jerry, and they were all over it. Red Smith was in there. Nice job by him. He came in and blew it up, read it perfectly. He lost a yard, second and 11. See number four for the Trojan defense checking in. I mean, all year long, you're so, you're so used to looking at the field and this monitor is like four feet away from me, and I keep forgetting it's up here. Well, you got to look past my big bald head to see it, too. That's part of it. 
Second if I was down. there, you'd have to look past mine. <laughs> Second down and 11. The two receivers at the bottom of the formation, they faked him in Gia. Oh, oh my goodness. Brett Smith again, I believe. Oh, no, Carson Pazaka. That was intended for Reese Lepsinski. And, uh, boy, the only the closest person there was Carson Pazanka, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for it to show that again. I think that was number five. At, uh, that's the second one today that went right through an East Central defender's hand. So, boy, if you're East Central's defense, you can pin your ears back now. Third and 11. Indeed, the Trojans. Four down linemen on that defensive side, and they're going to bring two linebackers up showing pressure, and it's a handoff, a handoff, and the ball's on the ground. The ball is loose. I think East Central's got it. We will see Mangia flag coming in. Mangia fumbled that football. He's short anyway, and East Central has it. East Central has it, and it's Rhett Smith getting off the bottom of the pile with the football. Mangia fumbles, and East Central will take over at the New Prairie 43-yard line. Right. Pretty sure I seen a flag come in late. Yeah, it's out there in the field at the far hash over there from where we're at. We're on the Colts sideline, the home sideline, East Central, and they're black on black. They definitely have the ball. I don't know what the penalty is. So the official in the white hat is looking this direction, and we'll see what the call is. Unsportsmanlike conduct against, against, New, against Prairie. New Prairie. Decline. And East Central declines it, and it'll be first down. And 10 for the Trojans. And I assume you declined that, Jerry, because it would have, they'd have marked off and just given the ball back. But not yeah. only did Red Smith recover that fumble, Jerry, he caused that he caused fumble. caused the fumble. And that was a nice play call by the Cougars because I don't think Mangia would have had the first down where he was. But, boy, they caught East Central a little bit napping and give Red Smith all the credit in the world right there, man. Great the tackle, defensive the fumble play. calls, and the fumble recovery, the trifecta. Trojans will come back onto the field offensively now with Burton under center. Handy to Ringer running to his right. Josh avoids a tackler. Bounces it to the outside across the 40 now. Down near the 35 where he's knocked out of bounds by number 88, Travion Ortman, the leading tackler on this Cougar ball club. But a gain of about seven on the play. Make it eight for Josh Ringer, second and two. Take that all night long. Josh just going down the line of scrimmage. Made a man miss there. And then you said big number 88. He pushes you out of bounds, you're going to feel it. You know you've been pushed, don't you? We'll give him seven on the play. My apologies. Make it second and three. Ball on the 36-yard line. I don't like him running out of bounds either. Aston (laughs) catches the pitch, running jet sweep. Eli, go, baby, go, baby. Eli across 30 to the 25, dives out of bounds at the 22-yard line. On the jet sweep, running to the left, goes Eli Aston. 14 yards and a Trojan first down. And doggone it, Eli, it went out of bounds. Good blocking by both Ringer and Brotherton there to spring him. And a great job by Eli of following those blocks. You know what Randy Maxwell said? When Brotherton's got the ball, Ringer's the best fullback on the team. And uh, when Ringer's got the ball, Brotherton's the best fullback on the team. Brotherton has it this time running straight ahead. He gets inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. A gain of four on the play. Bring up second down and six. You'll take that. Four on first down inside the opponent's 20. Clock runs. Ten and a half to go. Third quarter. Trojans up 27 to nothing. Trojan offense would like nothing better than to stick one in the Uh, end zone here to start this second mm -hmm. half. Aston split way to the top of the formation. Ball on the near hash. This is Brotherton running to his left. Lots of traffic there. They're trying to clear the way, but he's going to be taken down. Maybe a yard gain on the play. Offensive lineman pulled on that one, was trying to get out in front of him. That was Noah Annis, but uh, give credit to the New Prairie defense on that one. Trojans going to be looking at Jerry about a third down and six here. Yeah, they did a nice job just clogging everything up. The Trojans ran to the short side of the field, and that just aids in your defense's ability to, to clog things up and bring down the ball carrier. Third and six, as Rob said. Under center. In motion is Aston. They pitched to Aston. Here's the inside handoff to Ringer. This one went for a touchdown in the first half. It will not. This time as Josh gets wrapped up just inside the 20, down at the 18-yard line. Going to bring up fourth down and five. Try to trick him again. I don't even think they gained a yard that time. And I I, I would bring Nathan McPhee on here. I don't know. Yep, they are going to bring Nathan McPhee on. It's a long field goal, but you're inside here. And, you, and you, the nice thing about this, if he makes it, you get that point missed back and then some. Yes, exactly, Jerry. So with the ball 
at the 18. They'll spot at the 25. This is a 35-yard field goal attempt. This is within Nathan McPhee's range. Oh, yeah. He was booming them from 45 in pregame. So Nathan, out of the hold of number 11, Cole Wheat. Louis Gray will do the snapping, and we got a timeout taken by East Central. And I think Jake Miners wants to talk about this a little bit to make sure they've got everything set up just the way they want it. It was a 30-yard field goal last Friday night in overtime that sent the Trojans to the state championship game with that 24-21 victory over Ron Colley. If you've gotten to hear the replay of that one, you are surprised that my partner has any voice left whatsoever <laughs> after the excitement hey. when that ball went through the uprights. If this score holds up, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> oh, mercy. So stay tuned for that, folks. You want to uh, adjust the volume accordingly on your radios. You may not even home. need the radio. <laughs> Just took your head outside, <laughs> and you'll hear my it's partner. It's a beautiful day. Start a fire in the backyard. Oh, goodness. And we would not be on the air this afternoon if it weren't for our fine sponsors, some of whom are Cornerstone Realty and Lutz Auction Service, Whitewater Motors, Huber Trucking, Bruns Gutzweiler, and Hoosier Power Sports. Bruns Guts Willer, my apologies, and Hoosier Power Sports. Yeah, you, you said earlier, Rob, that went for the touchdown earlier. They were they handed it off inside and give it to Ringer coming back around. New Prairie did a nice job that time uh, on that defense play to slow that thing down. Or It looked like initially it might bust, but... Somebody got over there from New Prairie and uh, got a hold of Josh right at the line of scrimmage. And it's hard to fill these TV timeouts, I'll tell you. So it's fourth and six. And prior to the timeout, the Trojans did bring the field goal unit on. I think they're going to continue with that. Nathan McPhee still out there in the huddle. So let's talk about Nathan McPhee kicking the football, Jerry. Extra points, 57 for 65 coming into the game. Two for four on field goals, a long of 27. Uh, so perhaps I think I overestimated that field goal last week. I think it was a 20-yard field goal, not a 30-yard 20, field goal to I think win 22, the game. I 22. To be exact. There you go, partner. 22 to be exact. And the 27-yarder came the first game of the season against Lawrenceburg. Yep. So this one would be a 35-yard field goal. He did have one blocked in the Memorial game. That had, might have been. I'm sorry, Rod. That might have been why they taken the timeout because he did have that kick blocked earlier. They wanted to make sure they got their blocking right. So the left-footed kicker sets up over. At the 28-yard line, ball will be spotted at 25. There's the snap, the hold, the kick. That's got a lot on it, Jerry. It is up, and it is good. That's big. How about Nathan McPhee on a 35-yard field goal with 8.49 left to play? And I guarantee you one thing, David Browndike is on the sideline with a big old smile on his face. The kicking coach here for the East Central Trojans. You know what? East Central is incredibly fortunate to have a guy like that as their kicking coach, and we have the benefit of the replay here. It just did sneak inside that right upright by maybe no more than a yard. So give credit where credit is due, Nathan McPhee and the special teams. And again, David Browndike, who you've heard me say it before, still holds most of all the scoring, kicking, kick scoring records down at LSU. Is that good? That's huh? good. That's good. That's good at That's LSU, good. absolutely. At so, LSU. Big time football there. Of course, yep. he's had a couple of children kick yep. for this East Central Trojan football team as well. Sophie, uh, last year, and then his son, Caden, I believe it was, a few years before that. Caden, Is that correct? Yeah, five years in a row they've had a brown dyke kicker, and they, boy, what a fine Nathan McPhee has been. Only a sophomore is this young man, and he's only going to get better. So Nathan McPhee back on the field to kick this one off for the second time here in the half. As East Central now on top in this football game, 30 to nothing. And there is the kick by McPhee. This one will be fielded at the three-yard line. Running up to the 15, now 20, as Dallas Ryans gets out across the 20 to the 22-yard line where he'll be taken down right there. And that's going to set up New Prairie first and 10. Good job by the defense earlier. Forced to turn over. You turn that into three points. You just keep pecking away and pecking away if you're the defense as well. You just try to keep New Prairie down. We know they can explode at any time. Well, and you think about this team, they trailed in that game last week 9 to nothing before getting hot in the fourth quarter and coming back to win that game 10-9. to nine. Yeah. They can score points. It's a high-powered offense, but this Trojan defense has been up to the challenge today. Kamichik 
in the shotgun. Hands off to Mangia. Mangia gets out across the 25, out near the 28-yard line where he'll be spun around and drugged down out there. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is number 46 for the East Central Trojans. That's Braden Rouse. You know, you'll take that if you're East Central in a way. If they want to get four or five yards of pop and be content to eat the clock up, which I am I am shocked. This is a state championship game, and they are in no hurry at all to get a playoff. Braden Rouse, the leading tackler on this team, came in with 77 tackles. Eight and a half of those for loss, or eight for loss, I should say. Second down. We'll give McGain a six on the play, second down and four. McGee running to the left this time, gets a block, gets out across the 35. Out near the 40, but he'll be knocked out of bounds or down right inside the out-of-bounds line. Carson Kelling had him around the ankles. He'll get out to the 38-yard line, Jerry, and that will make a first and 10 situation. couple guys out in front blocking of it, blocking for him. Got a nice block on each of their Trojan defenders. Big gain in a first down, but there's a penalty, possibly. Uh, against New Prairie. Ooh. And uh, that may well be another unsportsmanlike here, Jerry. And let's see. We'll get the call right now. See if I can hear it here. That is indeed what it is, Rob. Great call. Unsportsmanlike conduct goes against New Prairie. When you just get something positive going offensively, Jerry, yep. you just cannot no. have something like that. And you can see uh, that Coach Casey McKim in his third season is not happy whatsoever. I, I have no idea one. where it could possibly but I don't think it was anything to do with the play. I don't think it was either. It was away from the play. But, but Jerry, that is a backbreaker. Oh, my gosh. That puts the football all the way back at the 15-yard line. And instead of first and 10, almost at midfield, now you're second down uh, and about 18 to go. Well, definitely away from the play. Kamichik in the shotgun, back to pass, rolling to his right. Still running out near. Now he's going to have to duck it and tuck it, I should say, and keep it. Braden Rouse will tackle him yep. out of bounds at the 18-yard line. So a gain of about six on the play. Going to bring up third down now and about 13. Again, just, you know, one play at a time in a game like this. Yes, you're up 30 to nothing. But one play at a time. you third got them third and 14 on the scoreboard here. And again, New Prairie. Yeah, the runner run out of bounds, so they don't have to be in a hurry. But I'm surprised how laid back they seem offensively here to get plays off at the line of scrimmage here in this series. Kamichik with the ball, back to pass, looking to the top, dancing around, trying to go far down the sideline. It's a short pass. The receiver adjusts to it and comes back to catch the football. Kelling brings him down. That is the receiver, number 25, Dallas Ryans, on the reception. They get into East Central Territory, and that'll move the chains first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Just a big big play right there. Great job. I think that ball was on the 22 or 18-yard line. Yeah. So 36 yards. Biggest offensive play of the day, wasn't it, Jerry? Oh, by far and away. By far and away. First and 10. Clock runs with 7.05. Mangia takes the handoff running to the left. Carson Kelly, a nice open field tackle to bring him down out near the 40, and there comes a flag. Another flag. They, that may go against Carson Kelly for a little taunting on that one. Let's see what the call is. Carson was fired up that he made a beautiful tackle out yeah, there. Did. And we'll see what this call is. Could be a face mask. A gain of five on the play. And I don't know. I shouldn't have be speculating the way I was, but let's see what the official tells us here. Personal foul. That's against New Prairie like again. Against wow. New Prairie. So my apologies. And maybe that's why Carson Kellen was Kelly was reacting is what was going on against him. So my apologies to Carson Kelly. He, in fact, did not get that for taunting. It was the other way. We'll see it here. And, and yeah, the, yep, the right ball there. Yeah, it kicks him. And that's he why. Him. He sure did. And, and McGee gets that on Sportsmanlike, and that's why we could see. All I could see was Carson reacting. I thought he was fired up on the tackle. He was upset because he got a cleat uh, uh, right between the legs. So, I think uh, you Central fans want him thrown out of the game. That's a big penalty, and now brings up second down uh, with the ball way back at the 43-yard line. they got to go about 20 yards here. Under pressure, he shakes off and then goes down. A great job by East Central's number 64. Eli Ertle. Getting to Kamichik 
and getting the sack all the way back at the 35-yard line. Red Dog, they call him. Eli Earl got through it, and Kamichik almost shook him off, but Eli got enough of him, caused him to go down. And Jerry's going to bring up third and 29. Of course, Eli's, both of his older cousins, Gage and Gar, played in the state championship game. So a nice little family tradition there with Eli following in his cousin's footsteps. It'll have to be a spread formation here as they bring two receivers to the bottom, and they're going to have to call a timeout because the play clock yep. was down to zero, and New Prairie does indeed take a timeout. Well, we will do the same, yeah. and Jerry and I will come back with more third-quarter action right after this. East Central on top, tw- 30 to nothing over New Prairie here on Country 103.9 WRBI. Baseball Chrysler Dodge Jeep is a proud sponsor of local athletics. I'm Michelle Galk, and at Batesville Chrysler, we value this community and the relationships we've built with our customers. As your hometown car dealer, we understand the importance of staying connected to the community. We commend all our student-athletes and their hard work and dedication. That's why we're proud to sponsor local sports coverage so that fans can stay connected no matter where we are. Remember, you can buy a car anywhere, but when you buy at Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep, we can all work together to support the future of this great community. The Sports Voice, Country 103.9, WRBI, Batesville, Greensburg, Versailles, Brookville. You can depend on Straber Oil Company, a locally owned small business. Regardless of the weather or time of year, you can depend on Straber Oil Company, your marathon distributor, to deliver fuel oil, gasoline, diesel fuel, and a full line of lubricants when and where you need them. Straber Oil Company always delivers with prompt and courteous service. Call Straber Oil Company today at 812-934-2910. Congratulations to the East Central Trojans football team from the Straber. Oil Company. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Alongside my partner Jerry Stanger, I am Rob Moorhead. We're glad to be bringing you today's Class 4A state championship football game on Country 103.9 WRBI. Today's game brought to you in part by Lutz Beef by Dale and Randy Lutz. Alex Shell, Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Hornberger and Sons, Ison's Family Pizza. Who's your foreign auto service and H&R Block? The timeout is over. A third and 29 coming up for New Prairie. Quite honestly, New Prairie has had three unsportsmanlike conduct calls here in this third quarter, Jerry, and just has really put them uh, in a difficult spot here offensively. Yeah, they had something going earlier on the long pass catch for the first down, but if you're essential, you've got to keep everything in front of you here. You cannot give up a first down on third and 29. Kamichik drops back to pass. He's rolling out to his left. Stops, throws it deep down the field, and it's going to be not quite intercepted, but deflected. It falls to the ground. The intended receiver on the incomplete pass was Blake Morse, one of the tight ends. Carson Pazanka was back there. He's the guy that got his hands on it. And that's going to bring the punt team out on 4th and 29. So Rutherton good. and Aston will come out, Jerry, to go deep. There good. you get a look at it. Yep, good job by the defense again. They were aided by some penalties there on that drive, but what a job by the defense here today so far. Still the shutout intact. A little over five and a half left in the third quarter, and barring a miscue here of some sort, Trojans will get this one back. That punt bounces, and Eli Aston gets near it and feels it on the spin, runs into Brotherton, and now taken down to the 25-yard line. So, Jerry, that was a little bit of a, of a discombobulation on a pump return right there. I'll but tell you one thing. Eli is a gambler when it comes to feeling those punts on the bounces like that. Very lucky that when you ran into Brotherton, the ball didn't pop out. So I don't think Brotherton thought he was even going to feel it. I think Brotherton was more or less heading off the field, uh, but... All in all, East Central's got the ball in their possession at their own 25, leading 30 to nothing, five and a quarter left in the third quarter. Trojans look like they'll come out uh, in shotgun formation here. Two receivers at the top, one at the bottom. Brotherton and Ringer in the backfield. They hand this one to Brotherton. Brotherton has running room across the 40, taken down at the 42-yard line. A nice run that time by Brotherton, brought down by Travion Ortman. 17 yards right up the gut by Ryan Brotherton. Great way to start this possession here. 
Going to bring up first and ten again for the Trojans. Clock runs with 5-10 to play in quarter number three. And I'm a clock guy. Don't snap it until that thing is under five. Two receivers at the top, one at the bottom. But they're not going to listen to me. Shotgun formation. They hand this one to Josh Ringer running to his right. Josh trying to get to the corner. Turns across the 45-yard line out to the 47-yard line. Tackled inbounds out there. Looked like Ortman was over there again and got help from Brady Burnett. Gain of three on the play. Going to bring up second down and seven. Josh actually uh, did a really good job getting the four, maybe the five yards that he got there. Uh, It looked like there wasn't nothing there initially. Looked like Hayden Scott in on that tackle as well. Under center goes Burton. Second down. They hand this one to Brotherton. Brotherton turns it upfield right over the center. Gets over midfield into Cougar territory at the 49-yard line. Going to bring up third down and two. A gain of about four that time for Ryan Brotherton. Just across midfield, third and two. Will the Trojans go forward on fourth down here if they don't make it? Under center goes Burton. Burton trying the hard count. Now he steps away, looks back to the sideline as the play clock is down to 15. Two receivers, bottom of the formation, the ball in the center of the field at midfield. Here comes Aston in motion, but they're going to hand it to Josh Ringer. Burton trying nope. to push him from behind. Oh, Josh breaks great a job. tackle. Second effort by what? Josh <laughs> Ringer, and he gets inside the 40, down to the 43, Jerry, for the first down. Incredible effort. We'll have to watch that one again by young number 15 on our monitor here. Looked like he was stopped, and looks like they're not good, but what a great job by Ringer to break some tackles. And yeah, he got hit at the line of yeah, scrimmage. Jerry. Yeah, he did not have it, and there was two guys on him, and somehow he fought them both off and picked up the first down. Two receivers top, one at the bottom, and the shotgun is Burton. Hands this one to Brotherton. Brotherton straight over the center. Gets across the 40-yard line, down near the 35. They'll mark him at the 36-yard line. Nice gain on the play by Ryan Brotherton. Going to bring up second down and three. Seven-yard pickup. And more importantly for my partner, it keeps the clock running. Yep, I'm a clock guy right now. At 3.05 here in the third quarter. The second state championship game of the day. Modern day from Evansville. Won the Class 2A game earlier today. Under center goes Br- Cole Burton. Hands off to Josh Ringer. Ringer running, running way out to the right. Did not get back to the line of scrimmage where he's brought down out there by number 8, Bryce Van Brainy. And it's going backwards, Jer? Yeah, it's going to be a hold on East Central out there on the edge. So holding against the Trojans. It's been pretty much a penalty-free game. Yep. For East Central today, but they'll get marked for 10 here. Really the first penalty of any consequence for the Trojans today, and they played very well in that department. And, you know, you think back to some of our games earlier in the year, Jerry, and you talked a lot about that on the air, that the team had to clean up their penalties, had to clean up some turnovers from earlier in the year, and, and boy, we've seen that they've done that uh, here in this uh, this playoff. Run. Well, yeah, exactly. Really, actually, since the tournament started, Ball on the 46-yard line, looking at second and 12 now for East Central. They fake it to Aston Burton, trying to set up the screen to Ringer, and he's got it. Josh across the 45, makes a man miss. 40, coming around the outside, 35, breaks another tackle down to the 30-yard line. real close to the first down. I believe he's got it, Rob. I believe he has it as well, Jerry. He's taken down at the 30, taken down there by Brady Burnett. But what a beautiful play. Another holding penalty against East Central. Oh, and it's going to all come back as a second consecutive Holding penalty against the Trojans. But, Jerry, I love the design of that play where they rolled Burton out to the right and then threw back to Ringer coming the other direction. But uh, as we start giving them credit for, for how no well they're doing, <laughs> we need to be quiet. <laughs> well, that makes for a dull broadcast. Yeah, right? it does. But, ah, that's tough. That and moves the ball way back into East Central Territory, the 45-yard and line. And Josh had the first down by about a yard, and... It was a really it was a great play call. We've seen that before uh, over the years, and uh, and Josh did a great job to make something out of nothing after he caught it. Second twenty two double reverse. Aston has it. He's going to throw the football, and he's got oh incomplete in and out of the hands of Cole Wheat, who would have had a first down and more, but it falls incomplete. So let's talk about that play. Burton took the snap and handed to Brotherton running to his left. Brotherton pitched it back to Aston running to his right. Eli then set up to throw the football, and he had Cole Wheat 
wide open down at about the thirty, about the 30, 33 yard line, and, and it hit Cole right in the hands, well, and he dropped it. He should have Cole should have let it come into his body more. He tried to catch it with his hands out away from his body. So now third and twenty two. Trips to the top of the formation. Brotherton alone at the bottom. Back to pass. Burton over the middle. Has Aston completed the 40. Will be short of the first down by about seven yards. They're going to bring up fourth and seven. And, uh, yep, they're going to bring in the punt team here. Josh Ringer will boot it away. Clock runs at 140 here in quarter number three. Good yeah. job defensively that time. Loads of time on the play clock here. I, I don't. Hayden Scott bring down the ball carrier that time. Uh, Burton would have used the clock right. This quarter would be over. There's still a, almost a minute and a half left. Josh Ringer drops back just past midfield, about the 48-yard line. They're expecting Josh to run it. He's taking it around the side, and he throws the football. Caught. It's complete. Josh Ringer finds Ryan Brotherton, Brotherton woo, woo, woo. at the 28-yard line. And the fake pump works <laughs> to keep the drive alive. Not Josh usually runs that, but he throws it this time and he completes it to Brotherton. What a play call by Jake Miners and whoever else might have had a hand in that. Beautifully and perfectly executed by Ringer and Brotherton. What a play. They get the ball down to the 28-yard line. This one's handed off in the backfield to Ryan Brotherton. No gain. On the play, bring up second down and ten. Wow, what a nice play design! Yeah, that was a, that was a great one. As the clock runs now, inside a minute to play here in the third quarter. So you've got them fourth and twenty-two, Jerry. Yep. And they pull a fake punt yep. out of their hats and uh, and get a fake punt completion uh, to keep the offense on the field. And second down and ten, and they're able to run that play and make it because of the previous completion to Aston that covered. About 14 yards. Under center, handoff to Ringer. Josh runs over the left guard, gets down near the 25-yard line. Make it the 26 instead. Just a short gain on the play of two. Going to bring up third down and eight. And they can let the third quarter expire here, Rob. They do not have to take a snap, and I'm sure they will. I have a feeling they will do exactly that as the clock is down to 15 seconds. And Cole Burton is walking yep. to the sidelines. So we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap up quarter number three here in the class 4a state championship game with 12 minutes left to play the east central trojans are on top of the new prairie krugers 30 to nothing jerry and i'll be back with fourth quarter action after this 60 second timeout on country 103.9 wrbi and wrbiradio.com maxwell construction company would like to wish all schools and student athletes good luck in their sports endeavors to make a great team it takes lots of hard work practice and dedication whether you're on the football field or participating in any sport or school event maxwell construction your leader in commercial construction and building solutions in southeast indiana since 1988 salutes all the area teams untangling your headphones finding the right remote saying goodbye to your favorite shirt that hasn't fit in 10 years why are simple things sometimes so complicated thankfully with auto owners insurance doesn't have to be one of them auto owners works with independent agents who live in your community and answer when you call so you can worry about more important things like finding a new favorite shirt that's simple human sense Ask the professionals of Southeastern Insurance in Batesville or Greensburg if auto owners make sense for you. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Rob Moorhead, Jerry Stanger back with you to get ready for quarter number four in this Class 4A state championship game. A game, quite honestly, has been dominated by the East Central Trojans. They're on top 30 to nothing. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Blimpy of St. Leon. Fetty Auto Body, Straber Oil, Maxwell Construction, Southeastern Insurance, and Tom Teepe Auto Center, and the Car Country family of stores. Just a great job so far by East Central's defense. Uh, the offense got it going early. They led twenty-one to nothing after the twenty to nothing after the first quarter. Uh, give New Prairie a little bit of credit. They have slowed East Central's offense down here somewhat in the uh, third quarter. Uh, Josh and uh, Ryan not breaking off those big chunk runs like they were in the first half. But still, all in all, East Central has been able to control the ball for the most part. And uh, quite honestly, New Prairie has not helped themselves with three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties here in the third quarter. 
some statistics, Jerry. The East Central offense, Cole Burton, 7 for 10 for 64 yards. Josh Ringer, 18 carries for 140 yards and three touchdowns. Brian Brotherton, 14 carries for 86 yards. Eli Aston, three carries for 82 yards and one touchdown. Also, we've got Eli Aston with three receptions for 45 yards. Ryan Brotherton with three receptions for 18 yards. And I believe Josh Burton, uh, Josh Burton, Josh Ringer has a pass completion yep. out there as well, my yep. friend. Yep. A big that, one that big on one. fourth and 22. Right now, third and eight. First play of the fourth quarter, ready to go. Burton under center. Hands off to Ringer. Nope, he fakes it. Play action here. Burton rolling. Looking has Ryan Brotherton and a nice defensive play out there by number 34 for the Cougars. Brock Sink at about that one away. And that brings up fourth down and eight with the ball marked to the 28-yard line. Maybe the 20, yep, 28-7-yard line, Jerry. Well, this might be a little bit out of McPhee's range, so they're going to go ahead and go for it. I think it was if they, uh, ball's on the 26, so it would be about a 43-yarder field goal attempt. It was more like 38 or 39. They might send McPhee out, but they're going to go for it here on fourth and eight. Shotgun with Ringer in behind. They fake it to Josh. Burton's under pressure. Throws up over the middle. It's going to be incomplete as he was looking down the left sideline for Josh Ringer. Uh, but the ball falls incomplete. The Trojans will turn this one over on downs. Uh, Josh Ringer had 100 yards in the first quarter, so New Prairie has really done a nice job clamping down on Josh. Uh, they've really limited his uh, yards per carry here in the second half. So the really the downers, uh, you know, Trey Omer fumbles there in the end of the first half, which really did not hurt anything as far as the outcome of the game goes, more than likely. But uh, really the first time East Central has been stopped all New- afternoon here was uh, on the incompletion there on 4th and 8. New Prayer will take over on their own 26-yard line. First and 10, Kamichik will be in the shotgun formation with Mungi off his left shoulder. Two receivers at the bottom of Kamichik rolling that way. Kamichik stops to pass, throws back across his body. Carson Kelling gets in there to try to knock it away, but I think it was complete. Yeah. And it was completed to number 31, Bo Kamichik. And Bo Kamichik, who is a sophomore wide receiver, gets a gain of eight on the play. Ball will be spotted at the 34 yard line. I'm just, I mean, I know you're down 30 to nothing, but in the state championship game, they are just in absolutely no hurry at all. Second down. That was well covered by Kelly. Just a nice well. pass and a catch from Kamichik to Kamichik. Second down and two. Rolling to the right this time. Kamichik back to pass. This one is going to fall incomplete. Intended receiver was Blake Morse, the tight end. Going to bring up third down and two. Clock stops at 11.04. A little too far out of his reach. East Central's defense has been there all year long and through three quarters and almost a minute now. They've been here today, too. Pitching a shutout here in uh, the 4A state championship game. Got to make Doug Hogue pretty happy. Oh, yeah. I, I will have to tell you, the folks that don't know this, the Trojans do hold a a dubious state finals record back in 1994 when they shut out the Cow 35 to nothing. They hold the state record for most penalties in a game and most penalty yards. Kamichi rolling to his right, Jerry. Sorry about that. That's He's all right. down the field, down the sideline. Intended receiver out there. It's a jump ball. Kelling's out there wrestling it with, and they're going to give a reception yep. to the receiver, Bo Kamichik, and he has the ball all the way down inside the 30 at the 26-yard line, so a beautiful connection that time from Kamichik to Kamichik. The Cougar fans finally have something to cheer about. And boy, when you see the replay, yeah, just yeah. a fantastic catch by the sophomore wide receiver, Bo Kamichik. And that, on a play like that, will always go to the offensive player. Yeah, it looked like uh, he had it, and then Kelling got his arms in there as well, kind of simultaneous possession. But it's first and 10 from the 27-yard line now for New Prairie. Their best field position of the day, Munguia running around to the left, makes a man miss, still on his feet at the 20. Inside the 15-yard line, the ball is loose, and East Central has it, and they will say it's fumble. Yeah, baby. The football was fumbled. It was not Munguia on the carry. It was Matthew Ogle, a freshman running back. Nope, number 34, Brock Sinka, the running back, fumbled that football. Let's see who knocked that away, Jerry. There you can see Sinka with the football. 
Pick Let number four out. gets in there. Jace Dorsey. Jace Dorsey, and it was recovered by Carson Pizanka. Nope. It was recovered instead. 21. By number 21, Andrew, Andrew Roy. Roy. So the Trojan defense comes up with the turnover. That's, I believe that's your second of the day, is it not, Rob? Yes, it is. The Trojans will take over on their own 18 with a chance now to really salt this game away with just a couple of first downs, if nothing else. So Jace Dorsey forces the fumble, and East Central takes over. There's a handoff into the backfield. Carrying the football is Ryan Brotherton. That play started back on the 18-yard line. He'll get positive yardage of about three yards out to the 21. All it is now is about ball security. So a good job by that East Central defense. When New Prairie got down almost to the red zone, East Central able to force a fumble. And Munguia was not in on that series. I was calling his name, Jerry, just assuming he was out there, but he was not on the field. I don't know that he's going to see the field the rest of the day after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Trojans go heavy formation to the left, but they run to the right with Josh Ringer. And Ringer runs out of bounds at the 24-yard line. So a gain of three on the play. Going to bring up second down, make it third down now, and five. Go ahead with your point, Jer. No, I was just going to say the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty he got earlier here in the third quarter. Um, Their coach took him right out of the game and parked him on the sideline right right next to him, and I don't think he'll see the field the rest of the game. So third down for the Trojans. They'll say third and four here with the ball on the 24-yard line. Trojans need the 28. Heavy formation to the left. They hand it to Brotherton. Runs over the right guard. Ryan gets out near the 30-yard line, Jerry, and that'll move the chains. I bet he's got the first down. It took the Trojans. They had to work hard for it. Just a power run that time. They call this the elephant formation, at least they used to back in East Central football lore. They basically have eight offensive linemen, five of them to the left side of the field right now, Jerry, the quarterback and the two running backs in the backfield. Went from the, it took him three tough carries to get that 12 yards on the first down, but new set of downs here. Ringer with the handoff. Josh gets across the 30, out near the 32-yard line, gain of two on the play. Does stay in bounds. We'll bring up second down and eight, and we've got nine minutes left to play. I hear whistles, and a helmet came <laughs> off out there, an equipment situation. So that'll briefly stop the clock as the player runs off the field. One of the new Prairie guys runs off the field. East Central's going to bring two offensive linemen out, and they'll bring Aston and Cole Wheat back onto the field. So we'll see a couple of wide receivers in the formation here. Nine minutes from a state championship, Jerry. They really have done a good job on Ringer since the first quarter. Josh has really not done much at all. Aston split way out to the top of the four. Made no piece at the bottom. In motion, he gets the hand, he gets the pitch. Running to the left on the jet sweep is Eli across the 40, out near the 45. Spins away from a tackler, still on his feet across midfield. Taken down at the 48-yard line. A great run that time for Eli Aston. Eli's looking for a flag because he did kind of get piled on there a little bit, but I think it's a good no call. Here you're going to see Eli. Yeah. At least we're going to see it. We're going to tell you about it at home. <laughs> Gets a nice ru- a block from Josh Ringer. Makes a man miss. Yep. See, he's, he's down and out of bounds, and he got piled on. So it really probably should have been a flag. You can see it there a lot better on the replay. And again, Tavion Ortman there for the tackle. Under center goes Burton, handing this one to Josh Ringer, running to his right. Josh cuts it back, gets out near the 45-yard line, a gain of three on the play. Going to bring up second down and seven. Tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. Eight minutes from claiming the third state championship in school history. How sweet it is. If the Trojans can finish this one, barring what would be a major, major <laughs> uh, comeback yep. when you're up 30 to nothing. But uh, we'll see what happens. I think the uh, folks right down below us are starting to feel it as well. Second down. Under center, Burton. Here comes Aston in motion. They hand it to Brotherton. Brotherton runs over the right guard. Still fighting, but not much there. Gets about three yards on the play. Going to bring up third down and two. They hand out coaching profiles to the media. So talk about Jake Miners. This young man on the verge of winning the state championship at 32 years of age. Been married to his wife, Alicia, for nine years. 
Jake is the father of four. Gwen, age six. Oakley, age five. Landry, age five. And Ada, age one. He's an English teacher at East Central High School. And a graduate of your rival, Franklin College. There you go. Third and four. (laughs) Aston in motion. They pitch it to him. Running to his right on the jet sweep. Eli has the first down and more. And runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And that'll move the chains for East Central. Cole Weed out there providing a lead block. First and 10 Trojans. Eli Aston has had himself a big, big game here. I think Eli felt a little pressure on him, a little heaviness on his shoulders. Had a rough game against Evansville Memorial last year in a regional. And that was a game where everybody thought East Central was going to win. It didn't work out for him. He has come back with a vengeance, a big, big way here in his senior year. First and 10, Brotherton running to the left. Ringer out there blocking for him. Brotherton gets a positive gain of about two yards inside the 30 to the 28. Second down and eight. More about Jake. Jake graduated from East Central. Would have been 2009, if I'm seeing this right. No, 2000, yeah, 2009 graduate. Uh, then he went to Franklin College, played football for a year there. He was a good baseball player too, Jerry. Played yep. for a couple of years at Franklin College as well. And they say something interesting about you personally or professionally. He says he married his high school sweetheart. And they're both graduates of East Central High School. Second and eight. Handoff is to Josh Ringer running straight ahead over the left guard. Look at Still Roscoe. moving as he takes the pile all the way inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. He had a nice block out there in front of him as well. See if we can get a number on the blocker, Jerry. That was a great job by the offensive line here. That is number 73 for the Trojan offensive line out there clearing the way. Noah Schneider did a great job helping Josh get inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line, first and 10. Big number 75 was well, providing a little help. That is Patrick Schneider, 73 and Noah. A a busted play this time as... uh, as, uh, the quarterback, and then we got a flag coming in late over here. I think it might be another unsportsmanlike yep. against uh, New Prairie. But Cole Burton I think you're right. tried to hand that off to Josh Ringer. It was a busted play, so Cole just took it and ran to the left. But way on the other side of the field, away from the play, there was something going on there that I think is going to result in another unsportsmanlike against New Prairie. It's unfortunate to see that happening to New Prairie, and there's the personal foul on sportsmanlike conduct, and that'll go half the distance, Jerry, for the Trojans. Going to make it, I believe it's going to make it first and goal. It will indeed. Is this going to move the ball well? How do they, yeah, it has to be an automatic first down, I think. Should be. They're going to mark it all the way down at the uh, seven-yard line, but because it's half well, the distance, they're saying still second says, and one. I don't know how a personal foul is not an automatic first yeah, down. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that as well. So second down and one. Under center goes Burton. Hands off to Ringer. Josh, keep driving his legs. He's in. Touchdown. Josh wow. Ringer takes it in from seven yards out, and the Trojans go on top 36 to nothing. There is your exclamation point for your East Central Trojan fans. Five minutes. In 11 seconds, all is left. Let the countdown begin. The Trojans are going to be Class 4A football state champions. And Josh Ringer just puts East Central on top 36 to nothing. And Jerry, are we going to see a running clock? Uh, You know what? Good question. In the state championship game? I think we might. I don't know if it happens in the state championship or not. We will find out. Yep, we will. As Nate McPhee is on for the extra point, but it's a false start against the Trojan offensive line. So that's going to back this extra point up five yards. Josh Ringer takes it in from seven yards out. I want to believe that's his fourth touchdown Mm -hmm. on the day, Jerry. Yeah, he is the uh, state leader now in touchdown scored on the year. And obviously moved up the... uh, individual stats not only for touchdowns but for rushing and for scoring so to make it a 25 yard extra point here for mcphee there's the snap there's the kick and can you say 37 to nothing (laughs) as the extra point is good by mcphee and we will take a 30 second timeout and come back with the last five minutes 11 seconds of this one right after this east central on top 37 to nothing in the class 4a 
State Championship game on Country 103.9 WRBI and WRBIRadio.com. Let's see. Tommy wants a Heisen UTV and Bobby wants a Chow Chow ATV. Oh, and Susie's been very good. She wants a Chow Chow dirt bike. Where are we going to get all that, Santa? Easy, Snowball. We'll just make a stop at Hoosier Power Sports. Ho, 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 ho. Santa knows. Hoosier Power Sports is the Tri-State's largest Heisen sales and service center, along with Chow Chow ATVs and dirt bikes, with a large selection in stock for Christmas and free layaway with two $200 down. Who's your power sports? Next to East Central High School in St. Leon. Southeastern Indiana's sports voice is Country 103.9 WRBI. Five minutes and 11 seconds separates the East Central Trojans from their third state championship in, cl- in football in school history. Rob Morhan and Jerry Stanger back with you. As East Central's on top, 37 to nothing. How about Josh Ringer? 23 carries, 167 yards, four touchdowns on the day. Eli Aston, five carries, 114 yards and a touchdown. Ryan Brotherton, eight carries, 100 yards, a long of 27. Jerry, you've got three running backs with 100 yards rushing today. Just a phenomenal day for East Central Trojan football. Uh... And again, all the best tomorrow to the Larchburg Tigers. How absolutely sweet it would be for Dearborn County to bring home two state football champions here in 2022. A phenomenal job of execution by the Trojans. They are starting to get giddy on the sidelines, and why not? Unbelievable job. And they're showing the (laughs) low game from five years ago when Alex Maxwell took it in. I would be uh, wouldn't be surprised if Dad, Randy, and the family might be getting a little tear in their eye about right now seeing those highlights on the scoreboard. And there's Nathan Lloyd. He had two interceptions in that game. Low scored on their first possession of that game, and never scored again. And that was another incredible defensive effort. You can tell by looking at they got the camera on Jake here, and you can tell that he's like wanting to explode, but he's trying to be so reserved and calm knowing there's still five minutes and 11 seconds left to play. You know the feeling, don't you, brother? Oh, it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable to sit here and, and, and do this and watch these kids, and it really is a great feeling to bring home a third state championship in football, the fifth, third trip here in eight years. And I, 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 I pretty much know for certain yeah, they lose some guys, but the first thing that's going to be on these kids' mind coming back, you got Ringer and Brotherton and Burton all back. They got a chance to go back to back. Mangia fields McPhee's kickoff at the five yard line. Mangia runs it out across the 20, out to around the 22 yard line, and that's where this new Prairie offense, who has been stymied all day, will take over the 22 yard line. You want to look at what we've got there from a statistical perspective so far for New Prairie they have a total 197 net yards Jerry 98 rushing uh, yards on the day and uh, it's just been a dominant performance by the East Central defense who has 450 net yards 386 rushing yards on the day out of that 450 for the Trojans. And I think Jake Miners is doing what I thought he would do. It looks like there's a lot of new numbers out there on defense. 37 to nothing. Trojans on top. First and 10. Back to pass is Kamichik. Kamichik pump fake. Trying to go down the sideline. Has a man out there. Well covered by Carson Kelling. And that pass falls incomplete. The intended receiver out there was number 31, Bo Kamichik. And that'll bring up second down and 10. Nice job by Carson Kelly. And, Jerry, we are not. Right, I was just going to say that. Yep. Under the running clock rule here, must not apply in the state championship. Uh, typically, if you're up by 35, it would. But here, uh, the clock is stopped with 455 to play in the contest. I'll tell you what, on our monitor here, there you got the number uh, 14 up there, Carson Kelly. And uh, that young man has had a, uh, well, you know what? That might be freshman Trevor Perkins, too. He wears number 14. Back to pass is Kamichik on second down. He has time. Gets it uh, free over the middle, and he finds his favorite receiver out there, Dallas Ryans. The pass is complete across the 40, out to the 43-yard line, and that'll make it the 42-yard line. That'll move the chains and give a first down to the New Prairie Cougars. 
clock will wind after the move the chains. Yeah, I think there's still uh, first stringers out there, Jerry, if I'm seeing it correctly. And um, Braden Rouse is out there. There are some new guys out there. 38's new. You can see him on the monitor here. Isaac Smith, a Nin- senior. 92 is fresh into the game. Two receivers top of the formation. Kamichik rolling out to the right. Kamichik stops, wants to get rid of it, can't find a receiver. Good coverage this time. And Kamichik is going to be sacked. And that's a coverage sack right yep. there. Great job by the defensive backfield of the East Central Trojans. Kamichik dropped for a three-yard loss. Good job by the guys down the field. He was looking to heave it about 40 or 50 yards downfield, but the coverage was fantastic. And uh, as Rob said, that was nothing but a coverage sack. Back at the 39-yard line, will bring up second down and 13. Clock runs at 344 left to play in the contest. You're getting a look. Moses Sweet out there on defense as well. Second down. Kamichik will pass again. Looking to the near side of the field this time, and it's complete. Out at the 45-yard line to Ryans. Ryans wrapped up and taken down out there. Forward progress will give him the first down. Number 87 for East Central, Peter Coleman, the senior defensive back, in there on the tackle. And that'll move the chains as the ball will be spotted at the 46-yard line of the East Central Trojans. 3.20 left in counting. East Central up 37 to nothing, and it all started with a dominating performance right out of the gate. They took their first possession down and scored in four plays. They took their second possession down and scored in four plays. Shotgun for Kamichik. Kamichik back to pass again. Scrambling to the top this time, running to his right. Going to throw across his body. Out as a receiver down to the 25-yard line, and it is complete to number 31. Number 31 is Bo Kamichik, and he's taken out of bounds that time by East Central's Chase Bellman, a junior defensive back. And that'll move the chains on a big gainer again for the Cougars. Kamichik to Kamichik has been a pretty nice connection here in the second half, and uh, both those guys are back again next year as well. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Clock stopped with 2.52 left to play in the contest. I'm sure the uh, starting unit on the sideline is rooting like the Dickens for these guys out there now to get a stop. They want a shutout in the state championship game. Two receivers in the formation. Kamichik fakes the handoff. Now he's going to keep it. He's running straight ahead at the 10, makes a cut, he's and he's going to go to the end yep. zone. Kamichik will take it in from 22 yards out for the touchdown. Did a nice job breaking a tackle at the line and then bounced it out to the outside, to the far side, and was nobody over there once he got about to the 12-yard line. An easy, easy touchdown for Kamichik once he got inside the 15. Marshall Kamichik with his 17th touchdown, make it his 15th rushing touchdown on the year. He had 16 touchdowns through the air, his 15th rushing touchdown on the season, and that gives points for the first time to the New Prairie Cougars in this contest. 243 to play. Bad snap handled really nicely by the holder down there to get that extra point up and through. The extra point is good. Kicking the extra point for New Prairie is Owen Chalik. He was 54 for 60 coming in. He's 55 for 61 now as his extra point was good. And the score now ends at 37 to 7. East Central on top. Cougars get on the board. Avoid the shutout, 243 to go. I don't know if you can have a, this big of a miracle where you can overcome 37 to nothing. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they go for the extra point. Is that the Miners family that they're I showing on the scoreboard so. right now? I would now? have to think so. Yes, I it see is. four children there that yep. we talked about a little while ago, yep. and I think indeed that may well be the Miners family. And mom's pointing them out on the big board up there. So that's Alicia Miners and the children getting some uh, getting some love on the scoreboard here. But, Jerry, last week in the semi-state, uh, a very nicely executed onside yep. kick uh, happened for this new Prairie team to get them the ball back late in that football game and allowed them to take one more crack at it and win that football game. Yep. You're going to have the hands team come out here for East Central. They are definitely expecting it. Aston, Brotherton, Ringer. 
and what Chalik did last week, and, and part of it's just the way the ball bounces, Jerry. Yeah. He kicked that just right to where it got the right bounce to go right over that first line of defense and uh, gave his team a chance to get down there and recover. And I believe, if I recall correctly, on that one, it was 44, Nathan Andresiak, who recovered that onside kick. And he's out there uh, with this group as well, as is big number 88, Travion Ortman. There's the onside kick, and there's that bounce, and they do recover it. But I don't don't think it went 10 yards before. They might have been offsides, too. Okay, it was recovered by Bryce Van Bruany. But it was a false start or an offside situation um, against New Prairie. So uh, yeah, they, take it off the board. They got an incredibly early start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could have called that one from up there. They were so far offside, it was ridiculous. Jerry, I like the way this young man kicks these onside kicks, though, because yeah. he got a beautiful bounce on that he one did. as well. He got a great bounce. So, uh, And see, the thing East Central was laying back. They more wanted to let the ball come back to them, and he hit it just right where it bounced up and his guy could get it. But again, they were off sides. There it is again. Gets another beautiful bounce, and it's anybody's ball. And I, I'm not sure, but a flag came in. East Central looks like they recovered it, but that was anybody's football. It's yep. down near the 43 yard line. We'll see who gets up off the bottom of the pile. With the football, there's a Trojan down there and a Cougar. I tell you what, the young man has a knack for kicking it onside because that was a picture perfect, two and two in a row. It was beautiful. They must work on that quite a bit. I think Dylan Maxwell came up with the football. And we've got another flag just thrown by the referee right where they're standing. Yeah, so let's see what happens here with 2.39 left to play and the Trojans on top, 37-7. to seven. And East Central is, uh, by their mannerisms, saying they're both against New Prairie. I don't know. There is a flag right when the ball was being scrummed for, and then when both teams were away from the play, the refs threw another flag. And I have no idea what the second one is for. We'll find out. Illegal block in the back is the first one, and unsportsmanlike is the second one. Against East Central? Looks They're pointing toward East Central. What a, a very emphatic point. It was not, so both penalties may well be against the Trojans. And let's see then what the outcome of this is going to be. I think it's still East Central's football. Because they recovered the football, so they will mark them off after the recovery of the onside kick, if I'm not mistaken here, Jer. And let's see what offense comes out. Yep, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, so the ball was going to be at the 44-yard line. They're going to mark it back. Uh, all the way down to the 29. So there's the 15 yards marked off. So it'll be first and 10 East Central from the 29, their own 29-yard line. It looks like the starting offensive unit is still out there, although I do see Trey Omer in the offensive backfield. Cole Burton is under center. Burton does hand it off. I believe that is Omer. Yep, and they're going to lie. I had a feeling earlier when he fumbled that ball they were going to try to get him back in the game and get him some some time on the field. Trey is a senior and he's, you talk to the coaches and the kids, he's one of the best guys on the team and he, he knew he was his position was doomed when Josh Ringer come along but they said he is an absolutely wonderful teammate and it's good to see him get back on the field here as a senior and uh, get some positive yards here late in this game to atone for the fumble earlier. Got a three yard pick up there, going to bring up second down and seven. One wide receiver at the top of the formation. Ball is on the near hash. There's the handoff to Omer again. Trey gets it out across the 35, out near the 37-yard line to the 38. Very near the line to gain, Jerry. I think it's going to be just short. Bring up a third down and one. And two minutes left to play. 145 now showing on the clock. And the Trojan sideline and the fans are starting to feel it, Jerry. Yep. The third state championship is just moments away. Third and one, Homer again, and Dre will get enough for the first down and, as he goes across yep. the 40, and he, out to the 42. Really cool. He gets a chance to seal the game, basically, with that first down there. The clock will run out. It looks they do like not have to run another play. I think they're going to go victory formation, Jerry. I think yep. they're going to have to kneel down on it once or twice here, and the East Central Trojans so close to celebrating a state championship 
once again. And the fans come to their feet. Victory formation. Burton under center. Omer on his left. Ringer on his right. Brotherton in the safety valve spot. He kneels once. The clock is at 103. And we'll count them down. Inside a minute now to play. The play clock is at 34, so the Trojans will have to snap it just one more time. A huge victory in the semi-state over Ron Colley in overtime that was so exciting. On a late 22-yard field goal by Nathan McPhee after Eli Aston blocked the potential game winner on from Ron Colley to set this up. And now with 33 seconds left, the Trojans kneel on it one more time. That is it. The offense will come over to the sideline. Let the celebration begin. The 2022 Class 4A State Football Championship belongs to the East Central Trojans. A 37-7 victory over New Prairie. Coach Jake Miners and company go crazy. You're the state champs in Class 4A. Jerry, how do you feel? And it hurt it all right here on your sports voice in southeastern Indiana and your exclusive home for the state champion East Central Trojans, WRBI. Awesome, Rob. Great job. Fantastic job. This is what these kids and coaches set out to do from the beginning of the year. Uh, When you start back in January... Do all the conditioning, all the lifting. And like Bill Parcells says, this is why you lift all those weights in the NFL films clips. But uh, just a tremendous, tremendous performance today by the Trojans offense and defense. And uh, really, you, you wouldn't expect anything, any really different. They kept the ball on the ground. They came out strong. They dominated the new Prairie Cougars early. And it was never, ever in doubt at all. What a tremendous Tremendous feeling as they come to the sideline, to the student section. Here come the players over here, and what a scene right down here below us. What a job by the Trojans. Tremendous, tremendous job. The East Central Trojans celebrate with their fans. The players come all the way over to the sidelines, and the celebration is on for East Central. It's a party at Lucas Oil Stadium. For your Class 4A state champion, the East Central Trojans, Jake Miners is on the big screen as he is being interviewed. Let's talk about some final statistics on this 37-7 victory. For East Central, Cole Burton was 7 for 12 through the air for 64 yards. On the ground, it was Josh Ringer, 23 carries, 167 yards, and four touchdowns. Eli Aston, five carries, 114 yards, and a touchdown. Ryan Brotherton, 18 carries, 100 yards, a long of 27. Aston had three receptions for 45 yards. Brotherton, three for 18. And Josh Ringer, one for one. Just a dominant performance for that East Central offense. On the defensive side, the Trojans give up only 275 yards, 116 on the ground. And just a great job for a team that came in averaging over 352 yards Trojans dominant in all phases of the game. Congratulations to Jake Miners. Congratulations to every coach on this East Central staff and to all the players, families, and community. The scoring in the second half, the Trojans on their first possession got a 35-yard field goal from Nathan McPhee. That made it 30 to nothing. And then they wrapped up the scoring with a seven-yard touchdown run from Josh Ringer with 5-11 to play in the game. McPhee's extra point made it 37 to nothing. Kamichik got a late touchdown run for New Prairie to get them on the board. Chalik's extra point was good, and that's the final score, 37-7. to Partner, I know you want to get down there and celebrate. <laughs> Any final comments from you, my friend? Just a great job by the Trojans. Uh, they've worked so hard for this all year long, and that's not to say other teams don't. Um, I, I think the, the loss to Evansville Memorial last year really lit a fire in their belly. Uh, they wanted to atone for that loss, which they did. Man, did they ever have to dig down deep last week late in the game uh, to subdue a, a tremendous Ron Colley Royals football team and program. They just did a fabulous job all year. I mean, you can't point out one kid. A great job, a great job by Coach Jake Miners, his staff, everybody involved, and there will be a party in St. Leon, Indiana tonight, big time. Don't tremendous. You, don't you know, Jerry, don't you know. We want to pass along that tonight on WRBI, Jacksonville will be taking on Batesville. 
in girls basketball. And Jerry and I are going to get ready to wrap this one up and uh, let Jerry get down on the field and visit those coaches and players and uh, celebrate a little bit. But, again, we want to say thank you to our fine sponsors. We would not be here at Lucas Oil Stadium without support of our sponsors, Cornerstone Realty and Lutz Auction Service, Whitewater Motors, Uber Trucking, Bruns Guts Willer, Hoosier Power Sports, Lutz Beef by Dale and Randy Lutz, Alex Shell, Batesville Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Hornberger & Sons, Ison's Family Pizza, Hoosier Foreign Auto Service, H&R Block, Blimpy of St. Leon, Fetty Auto Body, Straber Oil, Maxwell Construction, Southeastern Indiana, excuse me, Southeastern Insurance, and Tom Teepe Auto Center, and the Car Country Family of Stores. Normally, we would get a post-game interview with Jake Miners, but the only negative thing about being at Lucas yeah. Oil yes. is there's no way for Jake to get up here and do a post-game interview with us, but we want to thank him for his pregame interview and for everything he's done for us throughout the course of the season. Thanks and congratulations to Donnie Stonefield, the AD, Tom Black, the principal, my friend Dr. Andrew Jackson, the superintendent. Congratulations, East Central Trojans, and the entire East Central community. You are the Class 4A state champions in football with a 37-7 victory over New Prairie. Thanks to Brent Lee back in the studio for keeping us on the air and giving us the opportunity to come up here and broadcast. The East Central Trojans will collect their medals uh, down on the football field and celebrate the third state championship in school history. Until next time, Jerry, what do you got? I think they just introduced the Medal Attitude Award winner. And if you can get a number on the young man from East... Young man on the East Central Trojans. He just won the Phil Eskew Medal Attitude Award, I do believe. Yeah, I don't want to give the wrong name here. He's jogging all the way down to the other side. This is one time. We wish they'd show a clip real quick up on the scoreboard. Would that be Christian Garrison, number 61? Yes, that's there it is. There right it there. is. There you go. Christian Garrison, number 61, the six foot, 221 pound lineman for the Trojans, is the Mental Attitude Award winner, and that's a big, big deal. We congratulate Mental Attitude Award winner Christian Garrison, and I'm so pleased that we did not sign off before we were able to announce that. So Christian and his family on the field. A $1,000 check goes to the school in Christian's name for being named the Phil Eskew Mental Attitude Award winner. That is winner. the 30 Central Trojan football player to win that award. That is un- unbelievable. Tremendous, tremendous award for that young man. No better way to sign off than that. East Central, your champions in Class 4A with a 37-7 victory over New Prairie. And Christian Garrison wins the Mental Attitude Award. Until next time, for my partner Jerry Stanger alongside, this is Rob Moorhead saying thank you so much for listening. Congratulations, East Central Trojans, on your Class 4A state football championship. Good afternoon, everyone. For WRBI Radio, I'm Rob Moorhead. Joined at this time by the head coach of the Class 4A state champion, East Central Trojans, Coach Miners. How does it feel? Uh, incredible. Uh, you know, you work so hard for a moment like this. Our guys have been working for over 10 months uh, for this opportunity today. And to watch our guys go out and perform the way they did today, uh, just couldn't be prouder. Uh, you know, I feel like a, a dad to all these guys. And to watch the, them go out and perform in the biggest stage and the way they perform today, um, just so proud of them. Um, and really just proud of our coaching staff. I'm uh, proud of our community. Uh, it, times like these show you just what a wonderful community that St. Leon is, um, a, a place that is a great place to raise a family, a great place for high school football, um, and, and we, everybody really showed out today. Coach, just a dominant performance by the Trojans today. You get a 37-7 victory. It was obvious the game plan was keep the ball on the ground early. You pounded them on the first three offensive possessions. Had to be pleased with what the offense looked like. Uh, Very pleased. We challenged our offensive line uh, early in the week that, you know, this is what we're thinking. This is our game plan. Uh, We think that these plays are going to be successful for us. And they they went out and, you know, executed a game plan. Uh, We talked about that this is still going to be a high school football game. And all they have to do is go out and perform and play really hard and uh, they you know they were able to do that um, we, we felt like that we wanted to attack them on the ground early uh, try to establish you know um, the offensive line and defensive line on both sides of the ball uh, and then if the passing game was open then be able to take advantage in the passing game so all phases we, we were pretty clean at today um, you know there's a few hiccups in every game that uh, you're not very happy with but um, overall just the way we played the way that our offensive line really handled um, their defensive line uh, just couldn't be prouder of a group. 
And defensively, this team came in averaging over 357 yards a game. You held them well, well underneath that. Defense really, really played well also. Yeah, they're kind of our unsung hero. Um, you know, throughout the year, they're, they're kind of the, the ones that just keep showing up and going to work, and, and they love it. Um, and, and it just comes down to playing smart football, maintaining gap integrity, tackling, and then if a turnover presents itself, make go make the play. And we did that again today. Um, and the game of football comes down to just some basic fundamentals, um, and we were able to play very fundamentally sound today. The defense, you know, there's a couple of times where their backs were put up against the wall, uh, and they kept rallying through time after time. Coach, 32 years old, you got a state championship under your belt in your fourth year as a head coach. It's got to just feel incredible in the position you're in uh, with all the work that goes into this. Uh, it does. It does. But it's not just me. You know, I have a very veteran coaching staff around me. I'm still one of the youngest guys on staff, um, <laughs> you know, just c- kind of manage the things, trying to manage the details, allow our coaches to go coach. And they do a really good job of, you know, coaching their guys, coaching each position group uh, and putting it all together. Um, if you would see our coach's office, sometimes you'd probably laugh about how chaotic it can <laughs> seem at times. Uh, but, you know, everybody has a voice and everybody has their input. Uh, we, we come up with game plans, come up with the scouting reports that we think are going to be effective for us. And uh, just, it's just a great staff to be a part of. I'm just lucky to be a part of it and honored to be, to be able to lead this group. And coach, last question, if I recall correctly, you probably didn't get to see it, but I think we might have seen your wife and your children up on the big screen there today. And what a cool moment that had to be also. I actually did get to see it. It was during one of the TV timeouts. Uh, yeah, just seeing them come up and enjoy it, you know, that's a lot of sacrifice that my wife makes with our four kids. Uh, my four kids, they love East Central football. They don't know anything else. Uh, they love coming up to the coach's office, love being around our players. And, and to see them, um, you know, up on the Jumbotron, it's a cool dad moment. Very good. Well, Jake, for everyone at WRBI, I want to thank you again for all you've done uh, for us and our broadcast. Always given uh, generously of your time, and we can't be more happy for you. Congratulations, Class 4A state champions, Jake Miners. Great job. Thank you. I appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you, Coach. For WRBI, this is Rob Moorhead from Lucas Oil Stadium and the post-game interview with Coach Jake Miners of the East Central Trojans.